let's get started. I can't remember the intro I used. You did the fake John intro that doesn't sound like Oh, yeah, John. shit. I wasn't trying to be John. I was just trying to make John's the, intro the more is very easy to, to do. People. It's just... Is that... Oh, it's <laughs> like jazz. <laughs> what the I'll do, do it. John, do it again. I'll do trumpet. What? <laughs> no, John, you didn't do it. <laughs> what the fuck? Do what? Do your little fucking songs. It's amazing. It needs a symbol it's, crash it's at the end perfect. of it. It's like, it's like I'm actually in the room. <laughs> like you're actually... Mine's just... Da, 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 da. You know what's funny? Da, da, da. A lot of people were complaining because in the, you started doing it in the Minecraft series. But the old Minecraft series back back in like fucking ten years ago. Now you you started with like really yeah. quietly, but now you, now it's this very loud thing. I have to manually duck because you blow your mic out every time. <laughs> but it, it changes over time. Mine mine got faster and faster. Then it got so fast I couldn't reliably do it anymore. <laughs> so now it slowed down again. There was a peak about nine months ago where my intro got as fast as it will ever go, and now it's slowed down. <laughs> Like there was a weird uh, period. Get a few minutes, Johnson. Many intro. Welcome to and I had to, I had to, and I couldn't reliably do it. Like it was, it just got too garbled. So I had to actually. Uh, I, I, had to actually change I it. love a podcast that I know just starts with this conversation fading in at some point, and just we're going from there. <laughs> it will. So we've begun. Hi everybody. Uh, this is our second go because we're recording this in the morning, and I've already said something so inappropriate we had to stop and delete the podcast. <laughs> Not so just start over and say it didn't out. We had deleted. to literally delete it to make sure it could never come out in any sense by accident. It's so early in the Chops. morning, I have literally zero filter. So Chops. this is going to be fun. It's half past 12. Don't flop it's your cock out, Daniel. We've <sighs> been through this in a way that nobody will ever know. To be clear, we're recording this at half past 12. Daniel chose the time and he's been complaining the whole time that it's About too early, time. even half though past he chose the time. Half past 12 in the morning. Morning. 12.30 p.m. Morning. I, I just I accept that anything system. before lunch is morning. I'm, I'm happy oh, with that conceptually. John, yeah, you're a twat. What is PM? What's PM? It must be Latin, isn't it? Uh, isn't that post post meridium or something? That yeah. makes sense. I think I think, I think PM is is post meridium or something. And AM is after morning. Mm-hmm. He agreed with it. <laughs> or the best way you do time is 24 hour time because fuck AM it, and PM. Yeah, that does get around a lot of problems. Plus, I'd like a 24 hour clock. Like, screw this whole has to go round twice so you can't see at a glance when you look at a clock. Not that clocks really exist anymore. I feel sorry for the clock industry, you know. Uh-huh. Like, they must be so pissed at mobile phones. Like, I, bought, I used I bought to be a clock so into clocks ago, when I was a John. kid. Like, every birthday I wanted a new clock. <laughs> I was so into clocks. <laughs> sorry. sorry, can we just address that briefly? That's... Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> I was really into <laughs> clocks when I was a kid. You... You every just, birthday, every I birthday. wanted a new clock. Yes. <laughs> to replace you the, the, it wasn't vast, the whole bunch of them. I wanted to replace the old clock with a new clock. I got bored of my old clock and I wanted a new one. <laughs> this was like a, a proper wall clock. Um, it's like there was a really good one that was square and like was white with like red, red graph paper as the pattern underneath it. And like, you know, the actual numbers were still round and whatever. The face was still round. But the backing was, was square plastic. That was a real highlight. Uh, right there. That one lasted two years, I think. But I really What are you enjoyed... doing with these clocks? It won't... You know you can change the batteries in a clock. No, no, it was just because I wanted a new, more exciting, sexy clock. I was just really into clocks. I think clocks are cool. Did they get jammed cool. up with your jism? Is that what you're can saying I, here? I... Clockwork Here's... is cool. All right. Clockwork is cool. Yeah. Every time you tell me something about your life, it's somehow very surprising and also not at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was just, I was, I was super into clocks when I was a kid. Look, I grew up in the middle of cocky nowhere. We didn't have much entertainment, all right? It was either that or the coal mining museum. <laughs> That's not a joke. There was a coal mining museum. Of course there was. <laughs> it was actually quite exciting because it had trains in it. Because obviously the trains pulled the coal. So there were like massive ass old trains in the coal museums. So that was quite exciting. John's so old, when he says coal miners, it was actually a museum dedicated to children who worked down the mines. <laughs> I think there was actually an exhibition about that. Though it wasn't recent. <laughs> yes, yeah, me, me and Dan and that, that. We grew up in very uh, stabby places. 
I mean, Affluent I agree. Places. From the story I've just told you, I had very little grounds on which to get snippy uh, with you on the last podcast about elevator worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's you going. Oh, elevators! They they they're too fast for me. I like a clock. <laughs> One take Amazing. every second. That's the way I Actually, like it. On the note of clocks, I'm fucked off at Windows because they've taken mine away. What? I updated to Windows oh, 11, God. and the clock's gone. Oh, shit, Windows I haven't done no, that yet. You, wait, no, the clock's not on the. No, we're both anymore. No, so I need, no, no, they've changed how the taskbar works significantly. Right, so that now, if you have a taskbar on your secondary monitors. The um the bottom right menu does not appear on them anymore. So the clock doesn't appear on secondary monitors, nor does any like system icons at the bottom right. Which oh, means if you're playing a game full screen on your main monitor, which is the one where the clock is, you no longer can tell the time. No. That's you also, bullshit. You also can't disable the default uh sound mixer button. So I have two now. You can't um, get rid of the networking button on the bottom right. Uh, and in what you're they got rid of custom toolbars. So I had a working recycle bin in my taskbar and that doesn't it's gone now. Um, my left hand it. taskbar is taller than the others. Oh, that's that. Yeah, that's fun. Is literally Daniel's left hand taskbar is like double Just, the height. But he's trying. Well, it's seventy five percent taller. I've measured it with pixels. Nah. So you sent me a video showing that if you change it to your main monitor, it fixes itself, and it just breaks itself the second you put it back. Yeah. It literally. It's the the icons are the same, and there's just a gap underneath everything. Of it's just another seventy five percent more mo- like taskbar. It's so Windows. My it favorite makes me thing, so angry. No, my favorite thing about Windows 11 is if you, you go into the new, the fancy new start menu and you right click on an application and you click on install, it opens control panel. It opens the control panel on install list, not the new one install list built into the new <laughs> settings menu. I is a new one. To find out how to rename something. Rename something? Yeah, if you right click on something, rename's gone. It's now a little icon. Oh yeah, no, they've, they've yeah they've got the new right click menu, but they still have the old right click menu. If you go to the bottom of the new right click yeah. menu and click more, <laughs> it shows you the old right click menu. Because again, it's Windows, and they have to bury every feature behind several generations of newer features that for some somehow have less functionality. Okay, well you yeah. two are being boring fuckers. I went to look up more information about the I'm coal mining. I'm sorry, your story about fucking <laughs> clocks was so captivating. And I've actually managed, and I've, I've I've been reminded. I never saw this, but at one point, briefly, there was an exhibition on the history of scabs, where uh, there's just a photo of a child wearing a hat, looking sad, behind a sign saying "scab." Oh, just I the child had to role play being a scab as part of the exhibition of scabs. Oh, like not like uh, uh, like one you get if you get a cut and then it heals. No, you mean no, like the sort <laughs> that coal miners don't like. Oh, you mean or did the back when the yes. museum of coal mining was a relevant cultural artifact? You're still on coal mining and yet you cut off the boring ones. Explain. Mm. <laughs> You will, Use both you, sides of the paper sorry, if necessary. You, I'm you, sure you will. You, no, this is the thing. You said, oh, I'm into clocks because the coal mining museum was boring. And now you're on coal mining because that's <laughs> somehow that's worse than the clocks. By your own estimation, I'm just talking the, about a new operating system is apparently boring. The history of mining is interesting. <laughs> Clockwork is interesting. Okay. These things are interesting. The good thing about clockwork, though, if you have a theory about it and you get it wrong, you'll be right twice a day. That was a joke. I tried a joke there. Yeah, we I both to... very purposefully <laughs> didn't <laughs> laugh. You see what? <laughs> oh no! Oh shit! He's got, he's got sound effects. Fuck it. That's hell. not a sound effect. I've just got a. I've just got a. I've just got a horn. Oh, that was you. Bell. Why'd you do that? <laughs> he's got a bell. Um, oh I've got, god! I've got a kazoo. <laughs> it sounds got... like you're just putting on a one-man band outfit and you're about to go something do. down the street. Oh god! I've got. Oh, I've got an accordion. Wait. I don't want to wait. <laughs> sounds awful. Please don't bring it closer. It sounds terrible. Yeah, I found it in an attic. In where? <laughs> it just went down by itself. I found it in, I found it in my grandparents' <laughs> attic. It's from the 50s from China. But China in the 50s. And it's Lovely very place. cheap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's not well made. <laughs> Or I mean, I feel like, you know, this is, we're, we're just gathering stuff that we can, you know, use in the event of the apocalypse that knocks out all electronics right here. You could be a traveling bard who performs terrible music where people pay you to stop playing it, Ow. which is, you know, a strategy. <laughs> you just stand outside the walled settlement saying, I'm not going to stop playing my terrible accordion until you toss me some money, you twats. It's a it's, it's strategy. <laughs> Um, and I will have a series of watches that are clockwork. I do have some pocket watches that are clockwork, so I'll still be able to tell you what the time is. So I'll be the one who's able to tell Dan, no, it's not morning. Look, I can prove it. 
Will that be very relevant in the apocalypse? That would be very useful. It'd be very useful to know what time it is in the apocalypse. Mm. Uh, I feel like that's that gives you, that gives you power. What's that like, do? You'd be like a time priest. Well, like, that'd be just, my job in the apocalypse. I'd be just, time priest. I'll be the only person look who knows what time it is. Just look up, see if it's bright or not. Yeah, use a sundial. <laughs> yeah. Which I can, like, exists. in cowboy times, the person with all the watches. No, they shot each other at sun up or sundown, because that's the easiest time to tell, isn't it? Yeah, the only reason we started using standardized watch faces and clocks and stuff were for trains. Yeah, but sunrise and sunset are God, wildly inconsistent about based on local clocks. geography and topography. Yeah, but why if is there's a hill to the east of you, you yeah, you're but, not going to see the sun yeah, rising until John, way later. But John, in an apocalypse, I don't give a fuck. Could you imagine John in a John Wayne film? <laughs> if John was John Wayne, <laughs> we'll meet at sundown. Uh, where exactly? Because uh, the topography and the etymology and the... Well, it would be pretty technology. fucking embarrassing if you agreed to jewel someone for the last kind of baked beans in the apocalypse and you said, we'll meet at sunrise to settle this once and for all. And then the one, then the next person just doesn't show up until an hour later because they just happen to live in a slightly shady valley where as far as they're concerned, they don't see the sun until two hours after everybody else. So they're just like, you know what, I'll have a nice lion. It's going to be ages till the sun comes up. You need to standardise time, otherwise you can't agree on anything. Then John, society's John, working John. purely on the basis of individuals just trying to survive, and there can be no collaboration. All of a sudden, no, you can't rebuild civilization. This is why I am going to be the time priest, and why I'm going to be <laughs> important. I will be the de facto leader of civilization because I will know what time it is. John? Yes? Do you know how long that fucking took? Of course you fucking do. Right, let's talk about something interesting. <laughs> Well, you said you wanted to talk about video games this this Actually, uh, month, okay, which is quite okay. frankly terrifying. So I have a note for something Dan wants to talk about, but I want to talk about my thing first because I care about it more. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I got a Switch OLED, and it's really good. Oh, Jesus. No, it's Christ. not. It's really good. It's no, it's not. Episode. No, I really like it. This it's is a really difficult nice. second episode. No, it's like, <laughs> imagine a Switch, but well built. <laughs> wow, that's was, every was, switch when you first get it. Switch? I had no real problems with the original Switch, switch to be honest. I mean, no. okay, it was a bit janky, but then it was pretty John. cheap next to most video yeah, game but, consoles. But right, so you know how like the original Switch, like you move the controller slightly, the whole thing wobbles and wiggles no. around. Okay, that's that I don't know because like, I bought a pro controller pretty much immediately. No, yeah, that I, doesn't happen on a, a new Switch. No. That happens on old Switches. You're no. just, it will, the OLED will go the way as all the other Switches. No, this is the thing. So the first gen Switch was really loose then the second gen switch that you have they they made it even tighter and then the oled one they've made them even tighter so they I don't move at all the stand is now an actual thing you can use <laughs> yeah but when would you want it? i'm never on like a rooftop party like john was in honestly i'm putting it down a lot because like, the thing is i can put it on a stand on my lap now I'll never forget um, that first dumb switch advert like where someone's just man. playing video games and then someone just comes into the house, waves and say, hey, do you want to come to our sexy roof party? Bring your video game console with you, please. <laughs> okay, the look. It's nicer, the whole thing's built better, and the screen's very, very nice. The speakers sound way better. The screen's very nice. I will this say- This sounds a bit mentioned... like Stockholm Syndrome talking here. No. You're just, you've just got so used to the shit build quality of the original, you're now praising the absolute bare minimum you should have no, expected I, from no, the start. Legitimately, I agree with you there because this is what, what this Switch feels like is what the Switch was supposed to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, it feels like what it should have been when it first released. Really? Because I used the Wii U and that thing was never no, good. No, Wii U was, no. No, I no. But this OLED, though, I mean, I, as John mentioned earlier before we were recording, um, I put a thing on Twitter that's basically in the options of the Switch OLED. There's a vibrancy mode that's only for the OLED. And if you turn it off, suddenly the colors just look like a normal Switch. It does kind of look like, yes, it's just now, putting the vibrance up 20%. And congratulations. Now, even you, even when the console. vibrance is down, because I, I tried this, even when the vibrance is down, because it's an OLED, stuff just still looks way better. I mean, Hades looks incredible on it. Uh, Metroid Dread looks incredible. Bioshock looks incredible. Bright why? Games... Ex explain why. Because the black. Right. Just I, can, I, so can I explain something first? I'd like deep. to jump in here. I'd like to jump in here. Matt brought me three monitors when he was setting my computer up. A middle one, which is really fucking expensive and fancy, and two cheaper ones to flank it. I can't tell the difference between the fancy one and the cheaper ones. And then when Matt came here, Matt couldn't tell the difference between the fancy ones. The only and the difference ones. I could tell was that the middle one has a much faster frame rate, but it was, again, subtle. We are yeah. actually reaching the point of no return where it's very diff where people are asking us to pay. Big companies want to charge us for technology which has now got so extremely to the edge of can the human eye really tell the difference? No, I agree. 99.9% of the time between 1440 and 4K. 
I agree with this. I, I mean, can tell the difference between those because one's a refresh rate and one's a resolution. No, this is the thing. I, I... Wait, are they different? <laughs> are they? 40, Wait. 40, John said 4040p, 40, 40 not 1440. Like... Oh, I thought he said 4040. No. Cut out. No. I, excuse me. So, I agree. But no, I can't tell the difference. John, I think right. the frame rate and resolution and all that, it gets a bit... Yeah. Over Pointless. about 90 FPS, I really struggled to detect. I, however, like, argue... at, like the people who used to say, oh yeah, you can't tell between 30 and 60, that's yeah, bullshit, you absolutely can. You but can. over about 90, it's really hard. It's hard. hard. Like, I, right, so I don't really care that much about the frame rate. I like 120. It's it's just, it's nice, like, to have. I mean, but it's never something I really consider when buying something. It's just yeah. nice to have. Like, I like my phone now has like 120 hertz. You know what? Scrolling looks a bit nicer. It's an improvement. It doesn't really matter. But on the Switch, the OLED, because I, I, OLED, I think, is one of those screen technologies where you do really notice the difference aggressively just because the contrast ratio is so aggressively higher. And the screen is just bigger as well. So it being bigger and an OLED, just honestly, stuff like Hades looks incredible on it. Um, and just having a bigger screen is just way nicer. I enjoy it a lot, and it just feels better built. I mean, I like agree that isometric games like Hades, having just a little bit more space so you're not such a tiny no, little wait, no, in the wait, distance, it's, no, what will I say help. Hades, I know I say Hades because Hades has the color content. Like, Hades has a lot of deep blacks. That's true. Hades, Hades has a really beautiful aesthetic. Hades is lovely. Yeah, and Metroid Dread also really goes to those deep blacks. And any games that are very good with darkness and have a lot of, of, of deep blacks and high contrast look really good. I mean, Bioshock Remastered looks amazing on it. Um, Bioshock Remastered did not look good on the Switch. Does on the Bioshock OLED, Remastered does. still have that really awful window break the first time you meet a big daddy, where the guy yes. standing against the window, there's the really, yes. really like realistic kind of glass cracking sound splinter. Then when he goes through the glass, it just turns into like six triangles that, that fly off into space. Yes. It always made me laugh. Yeah, no, I saw that. Yeah, that's they've, they've never fixed oh. that in all the remasters and re-releases. They there's still that this. bloody weird moment where the glass just turns into some floating fairy triangles. No, it's really, it's very stuff like that's distracting, and that's it. Makes me laugh every time I see that dumb moment with the first Big Daddy introduction. And I will say another thing on the Switch OLED that I will say is really good is you know any games where you're playing with a letter boxing, like any four three games like the Castlevania Collection or whatever, because it's OLED. Those letter boxing just looks like the rest of the console now. It doesn't look like an actual bit of the screen. That's all. It's just. Uh, I always okay, put that border nice. around. I, give you it. That I like the borders. Yeah. I play with a little border on. See, I find the borders distracting. I don't because they're stag pictures and I don't have ADHD. Oh, wait, I do have ADHD. Yeah, look, this is the thing. The Switch OLED, I'm not saying it's like, oh, it's an incredible... I'm just saying this is what the Switch should have been. And if you don't have a Switch yet and you're like, I want to buy a Switch, I think your your choice is between the OLED model or the light. I mean, you shouldn't even really consider the normal Switch anymore. I think it's a you bit... You should totally consider the normal Switch. It's way cheaper than the OLED. It's 40, oh, exactly. What's the price the difference thing? now? Like 40, 50 quid. It's not much. The I mean, OLED that's, is three. That's a game. The OLED's three hundred. The switch, the switch normal is two fifty, and the mm. OLED model comes with double the internal storage. But on the, I think it's just a much better experience. And I, I just, I just, I just think it's a much better experience, and I think it's worth that extra fifty, forty, fifty quid. Like yeah, I don't. It's, Dan's right. It's a. You haven't tried it. <laughs> I don't like fucking... No, anytime show on me, oh, this screen's this and that. You know what I can see when it comes to screens? Bigger. It's bigger. That's I can it see. is bigger. I can see that's that's one of the things it does do. Much bigger. Yeah, but it's not massively it's, bigger. It's, it's like quite, a no, fucking it's a, half It's, it's actually, or something. genuinely, it's really noticeably quite bigger. And as I say, the OLED, I, I OLED is a technology I will instantly recognize no matter where it is. I, I think it's a really distinct difference, OLED. Um, what does the O screen. stand for in OLED? Um, Z- zero organic organic check. leds what it's got like fucking I think angler organic. fish built into it or some shit it's actually it's loads of tiny organic light emitting diodes i was right <laughs> it is organic it was organic okay that's uh, that's not what i was expecting like you know i think the word organic i think like, like chicken eggs <laughs> nice responsible breakfast today yay <laughs> I, don't, I don't what the fuck <laughs> Are my light emitting diodes also free range? They get to frolic out in the field it's to do before with the they're, they're they you know, cruelly put into the back of the truck by old farmer Mcdonald and forced into the Nintendo factory. <laughs> Look, what's are, happening? Are they allowed in this to live like, happy lives? What? Why am I hungry? <laughs> <laughs> He's a hungry boy. Now. You're always hungry. That's my secret. Legitimately though, I'm always hungry. I, I like it a lot. My my weighing scale today congratulated me on going down from obese to massively overweight. So that's the thing that happened. 
I feel like that happens every year while it was saying it, because that sounds like something a scale would be incredibly sarcastic about. It, it, go, it actually played a slow clap. Wow. <laughs> I think the the best possible incentive for me to lose weight would be the scales being incredibly mean and sarcastic. <laughs> I think that knowing that everybody had to deal with being guilted and shamed by a small by some dumb scales. But John, would be a you big need to gain weight so you can have a bigger trench coat for all your watches in the apocalypse. <laughs> mm. What are you buying, stranger? I, you know, I looked into this a while back. Because Into which bit of that conversation? The, Resident the, Evil? The, the, the sarcastic, or... the sarcastic weighing, sca- weight, weighing scales. Because, right, this is, okay. Because you know how there's, you can get, basically everything is a smart device now. Almost everything yeah. you can get as a smart device. So they all yeah, have little idiots mic- buy them. Yeah, but they all have little mic controllers and they all have this stuff. And I'm sat there going, you could mod these to just do other things, right? And I desperately wanted to have all my appliances be the old world blues appliances. Which Dan won't get, but John will. I wanted. Mm-hmm. They, there's a uh, smart it's toaster. It's a Fallout mm-hmm. reference. Thank you very there's much. There's a smart toaster you could buy with a screen on the front, and it is four hundred pounds. It's a toaster. Does it have speakers though? Because yes, it has speakers and a big screen. I hate it as a what, toaster. What is, wait, wait, wait. What's the screen for? So um, it's a touch screen, and then you select what type of thing you're toasting. <laughs> It's stupid. You select, you're like, I'm going to toast a bagel. Then it shows you lots of pictures of different ways, different levels what? of toasting. Of but I've never, of... done, I've never done that normally on toast. I just like choose how many minutes I want it to be cooking. Uh, no, that's wrong. It's not minutes. That's not minutes. Instead what? of having a minutes. screen, yes, why they don't they just have glass yeah, so you are. can see how cooked the thing okay, is? Okay, well, two things. There's two things there. A, John, no, Tom Scott's literally the entire video of this. They're not minutes. Second of all. Yeah, they uh, are. The One of them was, though. The more one of them was, but most are. And secondly, there are ones with glass in, uh, so. Oh, well, that's the smart choice then. That's yeah, the I know, I agree. I'm, I'm, I agree. This smart toast is stupid. However, because it's got this little mic controller, I'm like, you could make it, you could make it the toaster from All World Blues. And I, and I, I want to put like little fucking voice responses in all my little devices that can just be sarcastic little dicks. God, you're the sort of arsehole who would invent talky toaster from Red Dwarf, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Talky. Yeah, we were briefly on Resident Evil. I'm still fucking pissed off that Resident Evil 4 VR is coming exclusively to Oculus Quest 2. Yeah. Uh, Let's just create a VR version of one of the best games ever made and then restrict it to a Facebook-owned console. Have you seen how they do, like, the melee moves and stuff, like the suplexes and things? No, I lost all interest when it wasn't Oculus Quest 2. I'll I'll be interested again once it comes to something I've actually got and can record off. It goes 2D. It turns every time you do it. It turns. It pops in front of you into a cinema screen, so you can see yourself do the move, and then pops back in the 3D VR. What? Mm. Yep, that sounds that's incredibly it... disorientating. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, so can we just address that when uh, all of Facebook services went down earlier this month, uh, everyone's Oculus is broke and they couldn't play any games on them. There's a. I saw a, a mod you can install onto your Oculus that ripped Facebook off of it. It was like this 17 year old kid came up with it. Brilliant. And it's just install it and it'll get rid of it. But I mean, what I do we he think has a good of the life Vive... when he gets out of prison? What do what do we think of the Vive Flow, the newly announced uh, standalone Vive headset that I'm now going to check has actually know, been Vi- announced? Uh, Vive's biggest mistake is they've released too many different product lines, and I don't know what they all do anymore. Yeah, that's, that's a valid point. Like straight up, I know what an Oculus Quest is because it's incredibly clear. It but Vive's got the Focus and the Pro and there the was a Flow brief period, and the right, Flibble we and were the gonna buy. And I don't know what they all do. We were going to buy an Oculus Quest a while back because because they just are out inside out tracking. That there's a there's someone modded Beat Saber so that you could just take it to a field and instead of it there being like you know five rows or whatever, it has like thirty. So you have to literally leg it across the field. Oh, that sounds hilarious. Arc. Yeah, and <laughs> you can do stuff like that with the, with the, the inside of Oculus. And I thought that was the only headset that does that. And I think that's amazing. Yeah, um, and I think just being really able cool. to put it put it on anywhere and play it and not have to faff with the big faffy setup, especially for basic stuff. You know, for mm. big, big big VR experiences, you want the proper setup. But for basic stuff like Beat Saber or whatever, I think playing that. But then Facebook. Facebook be Facebook. And the Vive coming out with one is exciting. But at the same time, uh, they, as you say, they kind of fuck everything up a bit. So I don't really trust them. <laughs> There's too oh, many models. Like one of them's like only supposed <laughs> to be like for boardrooms or Sorry. something. So did you just say apparently it's out? Apparently. That illustrates the point perfectly, doesn't it? <laughs> it was announced that it came out. Have you seen the Vive flow? It looks like welder's goggles. Yeah, they don't, uh, they don't really know how to. Oh my God, they do. Because there, yeah. there is straight up, hang on, I'm, I'm going to the Vive product line page. Because there's straight up one you're not even supposed to buy. It's just supposed to be for business meetings. There I'm is. not sure who the fuck buys a, a series of headsets just so, hey, let's look at our bar charts in VR. Mm. That's not the business reason, though, is it? 
What is the business reason? I've never been clear on what the business reason is supposed to be. I thought it's if you're doing those more immersive worldy thingies. They got like really the popular Pixar lately just because of just because of That was incredibly VR vague explanation. Oh. Well there's that there's Sorry. that VR uh, Star Wars thing you can do where you sort of they, they, it, it's in a room. They've got a whole room planned out for it with like moving bits and pieces. But you put the VR headset on and the room this co- yeah, set of corridors and stuff becomes okay, like a Okay, when you try and sell that to an accountant as a business expense, that's going to be a hard sell. Well, it's to be that's super an audit from HMRC. Yeah, it's yeah, it's top tier shit because you're going to make money off of it. Sorry, I hate the look of this Vive Flow because it is it doesn't have a head strap. It's just like glasses. It fits on you like a pair of glasses. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't strap to you or yeah. anything. It it's just a pair of glasses. I feel like that that's going to really leak heavy. light a lot. Even if it doesn't, yeah. I, no, I think it's going to be, you know, the original, because I still got an original Vive where um, all the weight is just on your nose and in your eyes. And it yeah, hurts. I don't, it's, it's going to be that again, because it, it doesn't, because unlike the Vive, it's not even supporting it from the top. It's just the two things that go around your head and they don't even go to the back. They just, that's going to be horrible. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still team Vive Pro. That's my baby. Maybe I mean, I'll go with the Vive Pro Yeah, but do you want the Pro, the Pro 2 or the Pro I? Pro 2 I'll take. Yeah, nice upgrade. Pro I, not for me. <laughs> Because not only are there multiple product lines, all of them have got Elite and two variants. Well, I'd not... say that what's the, the worst headsets I've ever used is PSVR because it's like being on a fucking sinking boat the entire time because it couldn't track for shit no matter where I set it up. Mm. And the worst fucking headset I've ever used is the Valve Index. Because you can't use it. Because I can't use it. My glasses don't fit inside it. No. Who the fuck invents a VR headset that you can't put glasses on with? It is supposedly very good if you could use it, but obviously. Oh yeah, it's apparently amazing. I wouldn't fucking know because I can't see. Okay, yeah, the Vive Pro is five hundred dollars, which isn't too bad actually. Oh, it's quite cheap. The Vive Pro because it's the Vive Pro Two now. No, the Vive Flow. That, no, there's Vive there's Show, a fucking no, problem with the naming convention. Because <laughs> the, the sample they give seems to be like, hey, you turn the numbers so you can focus on the mushroom. It reminds me of those. I'm not sure whether this was like before. We, your time, but like when I was a kid, you used to have these dumb glasses you put over, and there was like a wheel of tiny photos, and you just yeah. flicked through them one at a time. John, you and I are like the same age. <laughs> <laughs> but it just looks like that, but you have to pay 500 quid for the, yeah, the but privilege. Matt, when you hit the it. 30s, you start at age really quickly. Yeah. Okay, so it, sorry. We just need to adjust. You just the wake up and you think, okay, what hurts today? All right, it's one of my <laughs> feet, the other, the knee on the other leg of my hip hurts a bit. Okay, well, no, that's no. not too you've bad. You've got to look back today. in the bed to see what you've left behind. There's the Hopefully vibe. You've just Only blood three or things something. hurting today. It's going to be a good day. I get it. You're both <laughs> old. Jesus. <laughs> No, I'm so annoyed. I'm so Matt's fucking... like up jogging and shit, getting a latte frappuccino. Me and oh. John are fucking getting our zimmers out, trying to stand. Do... I, don't know, I was doing give, that. Give me a cappuccino from avocado foam on top. I've been taking a lot of old people's medicine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not anymore. It's great. Yeah. Look, I'm looking at the Vive website. There's the original Vive, which is called the Vive, right? Then there's yeah. the Vive Flow. Then there's the Do Vive. Do you even buy the original series. Vive anymore? Hmm. What? I don't see the original Vive on their website. Anymore. No, no, no. I'm just addressing. I'm, I'm just addressing the original and the ones they're selling. Right. They've got the Vive Cosmos series, the Vive Pro series, the Vive Focus series. So they have four different product lines. Yeah, it's too many lines. And so, like, I'm looking at the like, tech, like they have the Vive Cosmos Elite and the Vive Pro are both mm-hmm. a similar price, yet. And I think they may do very similar things, but they're different design. Oh, you can get a refurbished Vive Pro for four hundred pounds. That's pretty good. Oh, here we go. I found an explanation for the business Vive. Uh Vive Sync serves as a secure and flexible space where business professionals can discuss, collaborate, and share ideas seamlessly, regardless of time and location. Oh, Facebook were trying to do something like that as well. So it's it's just a Zoom call, but you have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to get more than like 10 people in a room. Yeah, so but, you, you know, could be there. Out. It's like offices and being in the offices, people who work in offices are dying. Did you see that fucking, there's a, I saw, I keep seeing a clip from the Facebook example of that with Zuckerberg in the thing. And it looks fucking awful. Like it looks like a PS3. Uh, you, know, <laughs> it you know, it reminds me of PlayStation Home, but shit. It was PlayStation <laughs> Home. That's what I always thought it was. And it's just, I'm talking about that awkwardly trying to do it. And there's so much lag between everyone. And like, they're doing it because they're doing it as part of like a news broadcast. So like all the news presenters are like in the thing. And they're all clearly very unimpressed. <laughs> I mean, like, wow. I'll give them one thing, which is like, there was sometimes, I don't know if they still do this, but it was a tradition a few years back in, in offices where people would say, okay, we're going to do a standing meeting because no one wants to be standing for too long. So it's going to keep the meeting 
short. And this is the same basic principle, except it costs tens of thousands <laughs> of dollars. Because no one's admitting to Dragon in VR, because everyone starts getting a headache and motion sickness. I so everyone needs to go and vomit after I about just 20 go, minutes. That, I, I've never worked in an office, um, but I genuinely think I wouldn't survive if, no. with people who think like that. How do you deal with a person who thinks like, that's an okay thing to say? Let's have a meeting. But let's stand so it goes over quicker. Why don't you just make it go quicker? Do you think your chairs are that fucking comfortable that people are going to be like, actually, let's fucking stay. Let's make a day of it. They do a very well, expensive chairs about now. Business. Sometimes very long meetings can be fun. You can get really into depth <laughs> and data. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Fun's very not the right word to use there, John. Maybe I interesting, but I, fun. I was I once had I can't name the company because I'm actually bound by contract to not name it. But <laughs> Amazon. Um, there was one company um that I once acted as secretary during a board meeting uh for. Uh so You're I got to be involved in, and I was only, board meeting. And I was Fuck only me. in the I was only in the meeting for about three hours. Uh, I wasn't there for the whole time. I was relieved. Three hour point. meeting? I could No, 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 the meeting was, the was six hours. I was just in for only I was only the first three, then someone else relieved me for first the um, the final Jesus. three. Good so it was a six God. hour board meeting. But they were it got into some really interesting in depth discussion. It was actually quite interesting. Interesting. You'd be how fast the time, how time, how fast the time can go when you get really clever people. John, I don't trust you. A... I don't trust your view of fun. You collect the clocks. <laughs> yeah, John's watching the clock, going, "Oh, this reminds me of my fucking childhood." Yeah, he's just sat in a meeting watching the time go by, going, "Oh, having a great time." I don't need to take this. I'm going to go and play my 30 second, 60 hour campaign of Civilization VI. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> By email. <laughs> oh, that's not even a bad joke because John does uh, use email for everything. Yeah. yeah. What else are you going to use? You're going to go to VR and do a Vive Sync meeting. There's a thing. It's called instant messaging. It's been around for a little while now. Yeah, I, res I resist that. I re I I've resisted that, I'll admit. We're aware. <laughs> yeah, We're very you aware. You through fucking Twitter. Like... <laughs> Twitter's pretty close to instant messaging when you think about it. Yeah, well, so why even about, it requires you to be on Twitter, which is the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Good old Twitter. Oh, Twitter yeah. is a hellhole that I'm glad I managed to escape from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said I had something written down to talk about, Matt. What the fuck was that? Flight Simulator? Ah, fuck Flight Simulator. Fuck Flight Simulator. So fucking hard. I what thought you were done, though. I thought you just wanted to say fuck Flight Simulator. That was it. What you is done. the fucking problem with Flight Simulator's install? I literally cannot get it working... I've been on multiple operating systems. I've gone through different fucking things. Flight Simulator downloads on my computer at two fucking... Sorry, three megabits per second. So, like, what, 800k a second? Yes, I know. That's... What is that? Everything else downloads, you know, at my max fucking download speed. Like, 30, 40 megabytes a second. And this fucking thing's like, no... It no, does sound like trying to download bother. something on PS4, which was always terrifyingly yeah, slow. Oh, because it did. It had that little fast bit. It's like, you can play the game now. Now we're going to put you on the shit servers. I, I, have, I would have my PS4 here plugged in via Ethernet next to a computer that is getting a thousand megabits a second <clears> down. <throat> and the PS4 would only get one. Yeah. One. And then it, would then it could tell you you could start playing. What it meant was you can go to the start screen. You yeah. can actually yeah. start the game. You can load up the start screen and listen to the music. It's it's fucking but flight simulator. I mean, I left it overnight for ten days and I got to about forty percent downloaded. Ten That's days. fucking ridiculous. Ten days. I the, left problem, it the problem for. with flight simulator is every time there's an update, you have to go through that process again because it uses its own like system for for installs because you have to have the game open. It can't just install in the background. You have to have it open. Yeah. Still. And, and any all the settings for fixing and changing how the online connects are in the game. You have to get into the game to be able to change certain things. To be things. clear to everyone listening, Dan has tried both the Steam and Microsoft Store versions. To be fucking clear, I tethered Matt's phone to my computer to get faster internet, and that didn't fucking work. So it's not even my fucking router set up. No, it's not the router. It's you've tried different ports. You've tried different connections. It's yeah. something clearly to do with... It's, it's, it's their it's, side. It's definitely not my yeah. fucking side. Well, it's their side, but it's something that... Their side that's having some weird conflict with something on your side which doesn't make any yeah. sense because i I'm, can download it reasonably fast and that like so it's not the, the servers clearly can work 
but for some reason, they're not for you. And it doesn't make any it's, sense. It's classic Microsoft. You said basically. reasonably fast. It's 10 times slower for every single person I've ever downloaded it compared to anything else they download. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. When I say reasonably fast, I mean compared to the speed you're getting. It's still fucking slow as shit for me. I reinstalled it, or I tried to reinstall it a while back, and I still had to leave it overnight. Yeah, Even so was... since they did the optimization update where you had to re-download the whole game, I have never played it again. No, yeah, because you had to. Yeah, because you can't re-download it. Yeah, but why yeah. would you? It's now not funny anymore. Because the funniest bit about the original was they tried to just dynamically figure out what every building in the city was, and repeatedly decided that say Buckingham Palace was just a it must be a big block of flats because well, I can't I, see what else I, I, I the like large flying. building at the end of the mall Flying's would be. Great. It <laughs> must be flats. But they've they've, they've 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 added loads of handmade assets in now, and you can get loads of good DLC. Yeah, which I feel like should have been in from the start. I agree. I agree. However, it's still like, like it's, it's a... basically it was just a procedurally Sorry. generated Sorry. planet that vaguely remember... resembled our own. I mean, that's every Do you flight not simulator remember, ever. Like Flight Simulator 2000, where you'd go into the shop and it would be like, "Here's the fucking realistic terrain for Leicestershire," and you had to buy it on a separate DVD and install it. Yeah, like this is this is flight. This There's is only about always... 20 cities around the world were actually 3D. Like the biggest yep. cities around the world were 3D. But if you went to any like even moderately sized cities, now flat. Yeah, in this way, in, in, in Flight Simulator 2000, which I remember because it took up a whole gig, and I was like, who has a gig? <laughs> um, it was, you it, you just get randomly generated terrain to cover most things, and then you could download basically the Google Maps version individually, county by county. Oh, God. <laughs> on separate CDs. Yeah, but there's some counties you can just sort of skip because yeah, no one knows you. where they are. Like, who knows where Buckinghamshire actually is? Next to Buckingham Palace. It's, Next it's, it's somewhere, but no one knows precisely where. No one can put that on a map. So what does it matter? Anybody who knows where it is goes there. It's like you Shropshire? get called towards Nobody it. Nobody knows where Shropshire is. I don't know where Shropshire is. Exactly. So there's certain counties you can just skip. Yeah, the Midlands, basically. You don't need it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's <laughs> not go crazy. <laughs> Let's not go crazy. See, I was, yeah. on, I was an X-Plane person, not a flight sim person. So no, I, of course you were. No, see, when I was... Uh, <coughs> worked, I, I used Max. Um, and back in like 2008, I remember like X-Plane 9 came out and it came on eight discs. And if you installed everything, it was 80 gigs. 80 gigs! 2008! <laughs> hey, wow, hey. that is a lot. a lot. Yeah, but and then when you, but when you opened the installer, it showed you a map of the world and it, and it had it in squares and you would click the squares you wanted to install to rain for. <laughs> it was just, oh, I'll just take England, please. Thank you. And it, it, But every game is... And, but Flight Sim, the new one, actually having to rain for the whole world... And adding some building flavor to below when you find you're out, I think is excellent. I, just... I feel like we need to come up with like a, a way of evaluating games that uses this as a metric. Like we need to figure out fun to how big the game is in gigabytes as a ratio. Because I feel like that's got to be one of the least favorable ratios I've ever heard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 80 gig to an old float simulator has got to be... Hey, I, I was cool. to... You could fire the space shuttle. You know, they released a physical version of the new flight simulator. It's 10 DVDs. Oh. So you can sort of... But that's, like, so out of date now that you'd immediately have to download the game. Yeah, you'd have to download the new update again, yeah. Immediately. Yeah. It just doesn't work. I was I was taken surprised by one recently. I Because sometimes I'm just, you know... I, I find it noteworthy when I find a game where I say, Oh, you know, it looks like a small game. And I buy it. And the game's like, oh, do you want to install this? And I go, yes. Oh, it's 70 gigs. Like, Fuck off. <laughs> Why? How on earth uh, could this possibly be that? I one of those recently. Have you, you heard of, um, you know that terrible game, Agony? Yep. Well, you know, it's got, a, it's got a t an even worse sequel, Succubus, which is just yes. the same thing, but even edgier yeah, and even more booby. Yeah. 55 gig. It's pretty good. And it's linear. It's incredibly linear. It's pretty damn sure. It's just... Boobs, 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 punch a dead pregnant woman to rip the embryo out of her in order to eat it, because that's how you get your health oh, back. Rebecca seriously, would love that. Yeah, this is just <laughs> this is just basically a game that's just edginess as you know, perceived by a 14-year-old boy, the game. So Rebecca. Uh, it, it's just nothing but, but like I I can't understand how they made this 55 gig. No, there's so much like it's I called have nothing in it. An optimization. I've had this problem on the Switch, because obviously Nintendo's games on the Switch tend to be Quite small. I mean, what, Mario Odyssey is like six gigs or something. But then when third yeah, parties come in, I think, now. well, enjoy our 80 gig Call of Duty. Well, yeah, fucking like um, uh, Trials Rising. That can't be that big. Tri no, Trials Rising, is, that Trials Rising is, yeah, it's massive on the Switch, even though it looks like shit. 
I got Damn. Mortal Kombat 11 on the Switch, and it is 33 gigabytes. It is Woo-hoo. the biggest game on the Switch I have installed by double. Breath of the Wild is 16 gigs. 16! Mortal Kombat well, 11. Yeah, that's just running at 240p. Yeah, but Mortal Kombat 11 is <laughs> running at fucking 240p, and every texture is a potato. And it's a fighting <laughs> game. It's not like it's got a fucking big open world. It's a fighting game with, like, 10 maps. How the fuck is it 33 gigs? I mean, maps is a generous expression yeah, for exactly, yeah, an yeah. arena. It is a very generous expression. It's still 33 fucking gigs. It's ridiculous. It's a room. It's not even a room. A room requires, it implies three dimensions. This is the thing. That's an optimised bullshit. Whereas Flight Sims have always given it a, a bit of a break to because it's the whole world, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but th- th- no, no, it's not. Because where do you spend most of your time when you're flying? In the, In the sky. air. Yeah, quite high up. So how much does it actually matter what's going on well, down be, below? Well, the whole big deal that Flight Sim 2020 was is that you could finally do VFR flying properly because you never could before. Be- I don't because know what that is. Visual flight rules. It's explicitly that you don't, you're not high up. You're navigating by the land and the terrain. You're looking down and going, oh, I, I, I'll go to this building and turn right. That's a really common thing for um, like small pilots, like flying little planes. And you've never been able to do it in flight sim before. And now you can because there's actually buildings and terrain you can navigate based on them. Except you can't because all the buildings are wrong. Oh, it doesn't matter. So if, if you say, wrong. well, I'm going to go to Buckingham Palace, you, oh shit, that's not Buckingham Palace. That's a, that's a block of flats. Well, they've added them in. lost. And it's close enough. It's close enough for VFR flying. And that's the sort of point. VFR, it's not perfect. You're right. Because when Wait, I. Fl- on, are you actually. No, no, no. Is this, you're saying this isn't in video games. This is the actual real. Pilots in little planes navigate by just going from building to building. Well, they don't navigate going yeah, from building to building. Knock, but... They don't knock on the doors, John. Where are we? It's visual flight rule flight, VFR. So it's fairly reasonably low altitude. Amateur pilots generally do it and it's going, okay. And they just, you know, they do a little, they'll navigate by by things. They'll they'll find a road and literally navigate. In, in flight simulator, there's a whole mode dedicated to like exploring the Australian outback using it. Yeah. And, and crossing like vast... Nothing. Did they have to submit flight plans in advance? No, they don't. That's Say, okay, that's... I'm going to take off, then I'm going to go find the post no, office. This take is the whole right thing, to John. Reach. VFR flying, when you go up for VFR flying, you're just you're just saying, hello, um, Tower, I'm going to fly under VFR rules. And they go, okay, and that's, there is no flight plan for it because it's VFR rules. It's a separate thing. But VFR is only below I don't want all altitude. these twats just fly wherever the fuck they want in little planes. Yeah, it's called <laughs> hobby pilots having a nice time. <laughs> Yeah, but there's big planes full of people who don't want to die. Yeah, but that's why VFR flight rules is below a specific altitude, which the big planes aren't flying at. Big planes well, you have are to pass through it at some point, otherwise they can't get down. Well, yeah, but it's why VFR... It's why you don't do VFR flight rules until you're outside the um, airport like area. There's, there's, a, there's a flight path coming into... So, the on, so you're saying that an amateur pilot, the person who is least experienced and most likely to fuck up because they're just in their own little hobby plane, can just go to an airport and say, hello, tower, I'd like to take off, get a sufficient distance from your airport, then fuck only knows. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. And, and the air traffic control replies, yes, that sounds good. You just do that as much as you fucking want. Have yeah. fun in your plane. Yeah. You're telling me yeah. that's a real thing yes. that happens? It's VFR flying. What? How is John, John's this, learned that we... the world is more dangerous than he ever knew. This so, feels like this should definitely be a crime. No, because here's the thing. <laughs> in, 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 in an airport, like, right, this, you have... This feels like... What? At an airport, you have flight corridors, right? And it's what all planes used to land. If you're in... You're in the... the, the I can't remember the exact term, but it's the area that the air traffic controller controlling around the airport really specifically. And that's controlled no matter what you're doing. You have to I go, just yeah. assumed that if you were in an aeroplane, you weren't able to take off till you'd submitted a very thorough flight plan that you then stuck to, and there's a nice man in a tower with a radar keeping an eye on you, where if you deviate from that plan, he says, uh, yeah, 299GR, uh, please confirm your dibbly gypsing, please uh, correct to uh, 3,000 no, feet out, hold, thank you, Roger, uh, over. So, or something something of that nature. And th- then you had to, otherwise the sky yeah, police would come and arrest bigger pla- you. Bigger planes would do that, but small planes, especially at very low altitudes, generally aren't if you're flying at 2,000 feet. You're under Sorry, VF- you're saying that the planes that are closer to me and the houses <laughs> have less rules. Yeah, they're not crashing into you, are they? <laughs> well, nothing. <laughs> it's the well, fucking sky, John. Them. What the fuck's stopping them from doing that? I want the planes that are higher up and a long way away from me to do what the fuck they want because they've got experienced pilots and they're a long way away. I want the small plane John, that's close to me piloted by fly- some twat who's never flown a plane before. Yeah, but those, a small, those small planes. You have to obey planes. the rules. John, those small planes. If one of those small planes hit your house, you know what it'd do? It would crumple and it would barely... You wouldn't, you wouldn't probably might not even notice because they're tiny and made of paper, basically. They, I they, do not... 
No! They fly out the I do not accept this. They it's have a nice time. Points they fly speed. out and they go, oh, look at all the nice scenery because that's part of a big thing of VFR flying. Most amateur pilots navigate by VFR flying. It's really common. People, pe there's a lot of Holy amateur pilots. shit! There's a lot of this amateur pilots. terrifying. Cool. There's a lot you know, of cool the rest of my life, if I see a small plane going up and I'm going to get to no, cover. Legitimately, right. One of, <laughs> one, there was two ideas we had for doing that 10 anniversary thing. And one was flying to New Zealand. But the second idea that I had was of of the like the two or three of us flying from, via VFR flight rules from, from London to New York. But there's no yeah. ocean. Ocean doesn't have distinguishable. No, but features. this is the whole point. In those small planes, you can't go over the ocean. You have to go up through Scotland, over to Greenland, over through Canada, and then down. Oh, that's really fun. Because you have to refuel a lot. That, as well. was a to... way, that sounds like a way better video than the one you actually did that was shit and boring. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm so sorry that I uploaded something that was shit and boring. Come on, tell me about the latest game where you pretend to be a king. <laughs> I don't know which one you're referring to. There's yeah, quite a fucking few. precisely, isn't it? <laughs> I love that John's just sitting there in a dark little room being like, I'm a king. <laughs> you're the one who's pl pl doing a series pretending to be a medieval baron or something at the moment. Uh, I'm a peasant, bitch. <laughs> and I get all the fucking It's, it's Animal Crossing, but peasants. <laughs> Animal Crossing, but peasants. And, and I like it. Yeah. It's not depressing. How's it depressing? I make lovely little warm houses. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's not like. And also, John, how can you say Animal Crossing with dysentery isn't fun? Okay, you've got me there. <laughs> like, yeah. that's novel, isn't it? I mean, I, I now should mention. So I've literally just caught myself looking out the window because I'm now scared of small planes. <laughs> okay, John, when looking out the window, how many planes do you currently see? None, but a small plane occasionally has passed over John, like, just, in the can, last okay. week. One John, can has I, passed over. John, can I make two small points about the plane thing? Just to alleviate your worries, right? Yes. Just because something's flying under visual flight rules does not mean it's not being tracked by air traffic control. Okay, good. They're not just tracking Wait, the immediate terror around their airport. literally the last episode of the podcast, a plane, like... Go fly yeah, really low yeah, past yeah. my house. Yeah, I forgot about that. No, so yeah, I thought that was a joke, but now no, I'm really scared no, that, that really he was about to kill you. So, John, <laughs> right? That when I say it's con a controlled area in a controlled flight area, the, the air traffic controller specifically telling you exactly what to do. But once you go outside the area, you go, I'm flying under VFR rules, and they go, okay. How you qualified do you have to be to do that? Like, do you have six six do you have, minutes of training. Do you have to have a license? Is like a driving license, but for planes? Nah, if you can get yes. up there, you're right. Obviously, you need That's a driver's license. Having a, pilot, a pilot's license is really hard to get, even for an amateur pilot. Well, I They're don't fucking expensive. know. Apparently, I'm allowed to drive a motorcycle because I've got a driver's license, even though I've literally never That's ridden a plane, motorcycle That's not a plane, John. Before. It's not a plane, is it? What? I just feel like a plane and a car are about as different as a plane and a motorcycle. You're a fucking idiot, John. <laughs> I mean, literally, if you put me on a motorcycle, I don't know how to make it go. No, but, but I'm, you're not I'm in legally sky, allowed to go you? out on a motorway on one. <laughs> I think a motorbike you could probably work out. A uh, fucking little I mean, it's something to do with turning. With. It's like turning the handlebars or something. Like there you twisting. Go, you got them. it. There you but go. Done. I have no fucking clue. What to do. But I am legally allowed to take a, the most powerful motorcycle in the world onto a motorway on my first go, and that's legal and fine. And that strikes me as fucking insane that motorcycle licenses and, dry, and car licenses aren't different things in the UK. I agree with you. However, this doesn't. This is not addressing the main point that you're bringing this up to, which is you're confused by the concept of planes. <laughs> I'm not confused by the concept of planes. I'm terrified by the. Okay, I'm both confused and terrified. Okay, John, by the they're, they're still controlled. They're still tracked. If two planes are getting close to each other, they will tell each other and they will inform them and go, I can see it. Right? Because that's a, Can you see the other flight? And they go, Yes, yeah, they'll avoid each other. There's also a yes, system. But why on earth would you let the inexperienced pilot John, be the John, one who's allowed John, to just John, wander nearby John, to somebody John, else? John, even the most inexperienced pilot flying on their own is very experienced because they have a pilot's license, which requires a lot and a lot of fucking work. Holy shit. They cost tens of thousands to even get them. I and think we've got this wrong. I think when you've just got your pilot's <laughs> license, you shouldn't be allowed to fly unless you've submitted a full flight plan and you're going to do precisely what you say so everyone can keep an eye on you. And only once you've, say, I don't know, been a pilot Why? for certain amounts of years, Why? are you allowed to just do Why? VFR? Because I want people who are just floating around in their hobby plane close by to the ground were not being properly tracked to be experienced. But what, what are you worried I about happening? I don't feel like this is ridiculously no, John, unreasonable. John, what are you worried about happening? Yeah, Hang on, wait, sorry. They're crashing I'm on, guys, guys, into I'm the, on the phone. ground. Guys, I'm on the phone. Shush. Hello, BA? Yeah, could you just listen <laughs> to this for a second? We've got a bit of a counter-argument for you. Go ahead, John. <laughs>
I just John, want I, pilots can I just to a, behave can I in the sky. John, John, John. So, <laughs> yes. Okay, go. if a pilot's flying VFR world to like 2,000 feet, right? Why are you worried That's about them? That sounds very hard. No, 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 but why are you worried about them crashing into the ground? Because I'm on the ground. That's where yeah, I but, live. But John, that, the one thing you need to John's do gonna, as a pilot is this, stay in the air. That's the whole point. <laughs> after this, John's going to just be perpetually on like a 747 flight being like, this is the only place to be safe. <laughs> That's true, actually. That would, the, that would be the only safe place. Yes. You're, You're right. On top of a mountain. You're right. This is the logic that the recent film Black Widow used. Has anybody here seen Black Widow? I saw I that. It was cinema. terrible. I think it's the it's worst the Die Hard film. 5 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That I, just, fucking... no, I just came away from thing. it thinking, man, that was a catastrophic I enjoyed the sheriff from Master. Stranger Things. I enjoyed him. He was fun. As the and big then, Russian guy. I was really yeah. forward to Taskmaster, and then every single, like every scene apart from one, the uh, Taskmaster's in. Oh, was yeah, in Taskmaster trailer. was in it, was it? <laughs> yeah, Frank they was completely in it. Yeah, he wasted really that. So you've got the Taskmaster, who has all the fighting styles of all the Avengers. He's got Captain America's shield and combat abilities and Black Panther's things, and all the Avengers stuff is built into Taskmaster. Yeah. And you've got the Russian guy who fought Captain America and was beaten by Captain America and has a big beef with Captain America, even though he probably didn't fight Captain America and he's delusional. Well, he probably, and, he probably fought, if he fought anyone, he fought the, the, the black Captain America who was in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, he said he fought him in the 80s. Yeah, so that thought that couldn't be Steve Rogers' Captain America, but it could have been the other lad, um, the old black Captain America from Falcon. Yes, it could have been. He could have fought him. He wasn't Captain so, America then. No, he didn't. He, 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 he fought Captain America. So you've got this a guy year. who... <laughs> A guy who's got an interesting character built around fighting no, not, Captain not America. not fucking Falcon, the old guy. No, I'm very aware who you're talking about. Ignore Matt. Well, Matt Look, doesn't. You've oh, got, okay, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you've got a character whose entire identity is built around Captain America and fighting Captain America, and you've got somebody who fights like Captain America, and, and they, they fight, and nothing comes of that, they and they don't do mention it. it. No, what a His fucking... whole character. Why was Ray Winston Russian? Also, I, the, the, I think the big moral message we need to take away from um, Black Widow is it's okay to be an abusive parent as long as you're funny and quirky later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a mixed message Cause, there, cause isn't Red, it? Because Red Guardian's behaviour at the beginning with the whole drugging the children and sending them off to the kill programme kind of gets swept under the rug because he's quirky. Yeah. 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 As, as somebody... As somebody um, as somebody with face blindness, it took me a really fucking long time to realise that that was the same guy. <laughs> Marvel does this a lot, where they just... They kind of don't take anything very seriously, even if it's really very serious. Mm. Everything's got this quirkiness to it, because they think that's brand, but then they still try and do very serious stories, but with the quirkiness, and I'm like... Mm, but they, they really they like doing the, the abusive dad story, and they've done like four of them, and because different rights and different directions have been involved, they've all come to different conclusions. Like, Tony Stark, it's okay his dad was a bit abusive, because it was actually for Tony's benefit, so it's okay. And Red Guardian was abusive, but it's okay because he's funny. Uh, which is why I really like Guardians of the Galaxy 2, because Guardians of the Galaxy 2 says, hey... Uh, Peter's dad was abusive, and that makes him a twat, and Peter's entirely justified in cutting him out and finding someone who's a better father figure. It's like, yes, well done. Bonus points to you, Guardians 2, for being the only Marvel film to have an abusive I... dad who doesn't Sorry. get whitewashed by to... the end. No, I need to address, I've also, I also saw Shang-Chi. That was really I fun. Haven't, yeah, haven't but that, that was about an abusive dad. <laughs> that an abusive dad story that was another well. abu That was another abusive <laughs> dad story because like, Marvel just loves that. Yeah, but the entire setup is like, oh, he's, he's lived for several thousand years and he's massacred a billion people because he's an evil god. And it's like, when he's fine now, he's a dad. I'm like, what? I mean, yeah. just, just to say, Black Widow technically had two abusive dads in that film. I mean, really what Russian S.H.I.E.L.D. should be doing is if it wants to keep an eye on future upcoming superpower people, it's just keep a, a checklist of everyone whose mum is dead and whose dad is abusive. <laughs> Because that's, that's the clearest sign you've got coming up that that person's going to get superpowers in about 20 years. <laughs> I've, actually, I've got a, a question, a lot of questions about Black Widow. You know Ray Winston, for some reason, playing a Russians. Why would you get, like, the guy... With, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. His ability to not get shot was based on the fact that she could smell his pheromones, right? Yeah. Why didn't she just go to the other side of the big room? Yeah, it's it's a what I think that's a problem is bigger than that. Hold because the breath. most hilarious thing is in <laughs> her ba in her backstory, it's specifically established that the last way she tried to assassinate him was planting a bomb and then detonating it remotely. A plan yeah. that even though she's already tried to kill him with that method, 
the self-defense mechanism he came up with would not have protected him from that exact method again. It would yeah. have worked if she'd planted a bomb, gone out of smell range, and then pressed the button. <laughs> Literally the same method she'd already almost killed him with would have worked a second time. Yeah. There's a lot of... it's a, Yeah, I didn't like that it became mind like magical mind control as opposed to... Like the really cool, or well, they've been doing like that, you know, the brainwashing stuff, which you can yeah. sort of just fight back if you're strong enough, Winter Soldier style. Uh, you've got to put the effort in, though. I, this time it was literally magic mind control that could be undone with a smelly source. Yeah. It's they don't really know what they're doing. Marvel, I feel like they've kind of they've kind of got to a point where they've got shit. We've kind of run out of our main stuff, but they're trying to. Oh, like, I, I think I think they're they really fun absolute... building up to a mass. The, the multiverse stuff they've been building through the TV series is actually quite fun. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The TV series have all entirely been hits. Um, yeah, I'd argue what if Loki, what if have all been fun. I'd argue what if. What if was great fun? Yeah. No, I'd argue th- what, what if. if was a bit just like just fun little no, digestible the, the content. Problem with, the, the problem with what if is there's three episodes of what if. Fun. Which, no, there's three episodes of what if which don't have an ending. That, that stop yeah, halfway true. through. Yes, they just stop halfway through, and it's like, well, and I'm like, what? They ran out. Well, they, one episode. Episode. they ran out of paper, so that's that was it. I mean, there's one episode that didn't even air. Yeah, which the, is the, a, they got more award. Good. Yeah, that's why she's in the last one. It's like, what? Yeah. This, they, they had to pull it and they're putting it in the next season. They didn't I finish mean, it. You can vaguely guess what's going on in it. <laughs> There's also a really weird thing with it because every almost every character is voiced by the original actor, right? Yes. Aside from Tony, Steve, and Peter. Drax. Though Steve's, no fairness, no, did, the, the Steve replacement actor did a pretty good job. Yeah, but then, yeah. but then, you know, um, the, oh, what, God, what's his name? The Collector. Yeah. yeah, he's voiced by his original voice actor. He doesn't sound like it. He sounds yeah. like he's being so, impersonated. Well, the thing is, this is why you don't generally get traditional film stars in to do voice work because they're not the same skill set. Yeah, but and why tra- when they got tra- Peter Dinklage in to voice Destiny, it was so bad they had to yeah, but, literally yeah, but it's not it's not out. like that. It's like they're playing themselves, a the character they've already played. <laughs> like yeah, but even so, like if you don't have a proper yeah. set and actors to bounce off and you know all the cameras, That's sometimes fair. people can't do it. And I, I think mean, Hayley Atwell, for example, did not do a good job as Captain Carter. She sounded very. Oh, you mean the ep- you mean the, the episode that was just Captain America one, but with Peggy instead of yeah. yeah. I think Hayley Atwell would did not do well, so, and I'm not saying that doesn't mean she's a bad actress. She's really good in the film, so, so, but I think so, she can't do it when she's in a voice. So studio. to catch up here, we have one episode of it which is just Captain America one, but with 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 fucking Peggy hey. instead of Steve. We have uh two two episodes: the zombie one and the what's the other one? Uh, that don't finish. They just don't have. An uh, that was the Killmonger one that just didn't end. Well, yeah, right? those two, which just they get to a point. Because there was like, clearly what? about to be an ending yeah. where Pepper and Shuri were going to deal with him, then they didn't. Yeah, and so they don't end. Then there's the the weird Thor one, which. Eh. Oh, um, that was well, fun. I loved Looney Tunes. Thor is the Thor. best Thor, and I demand more Thor of that nature. Party Thor was amazing. I what thought, are you chatting about? I thought the best one was the uh, Doctor Strange one. No, that's yeah, just honestly, miserable. I thought that was actually the the least interesting. That because yeah. it was very tropey. It was just. Oh, man tries to use Hang time on. travel to fix That's problems, tropey, but, but can't. fucking classic fucking classic it's kid having really a party boring. is it's not. It's just really standard science fiction trope. Yeah, I mean, like the the thought party thought one was almost Looney Tunes. I loved it. Yeah, it was just dumb as shit. I liked that they got all the. I, it was fun. I didn't. All think the, it was all the countries it was fun. when he went out into space, all the countries had their names written on I them. How do you not love that? <laughs> That was just ridiculous. I enjoyed that they got <laughs> Jeff Goldblum and fucking uh, Carl Urban in. Just to and just how like wholesome lines. was Loki and Thor's relationship in that? Yeah. That was lovely. It was a lovely thing. It just that wasn't. Was I I had fun with it. I just. I mean, but that's. I'm fine with a, an episode just being fun. I, I like that they at least tried to do ones that were just kind of fun and slapstick, and then they tried to do ones that were a bit more serious. I just. Yeah. I just didn't like that they had two episodes that didn't end. That was. I just, that annoyed me. To know Loki that. was the worst one for me simply because a lot of plot points in the Paradox Paradox it came fucking close to touching and was genuinely unnerving to Back watch. Back now on unbound.com slash books of paradox. <laughs> I know I really there was some points in that when like they've literally got a very similar setup to one of the bits in Paradox. And I'm like, oh fuck, are they about to literally undercut me? And then they absolutely fucked it up and I went, oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> they set up I'm not gonna talk about it, but they set up a really interesting dilemma and decided that it wasn't a dilemma. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> thanks, bye. If anything, it's kind of, the ending kind of ruined Age of Ultron for me. Because if, if you look at like how fucking awesome 
Ultron was and the ending of whatever you say, wow, they really fucking did Ultron dirty in his film. I like, I well, yeah, but the, the, that's where we got the vision from as being the ultra powerful. Yeah, but he wasn't. He, he just got every fight vision ev- was ever in the MCU. He got beaten. Every one. He just got beaten to shit. No, he didn't. What? He was. No, he didn't. He did really well in the airport was... fight in Civil War. That's the, yeah, I... in everything, he's just he's controlled. He's really controlled. He does exactly what he needs to do and nothing more. Mm. He got the shit kicked out of him in Endgame, but that's because he got fucking stabbed in the arsehole while he was slogging one. Yeah, by a special anti him weapon. Mm. Yeah, I did. In a in a scene that gave me the biggest jump scare I've ever had in the cinema. That I don't know why it really shut me up. He's <laughs> not... I went, oh fuck it up. I like. I just feel he's not had enough time to just be him. I feel. He's always, always everything he's well, ever WandaVision in. helps with that. WandaVision yeah. does help with that, I agree. Which is why I really like WandaVision. Um, it's very fun. I just, I want to be more, I thought, I did think it was interesting in what if the bit where like Thanos comes out and he just cuts him in half. Cuts him in half. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> right. fun. Bye. Yeah, I feel, I feel Do like. Do you know how was... that worked though? Do you know how it worked? He aimed for the head to start with. Sliced him head first. Oh, that's hilarious. I didn't even think about that. I feel yeah. like they just done that. They just done that in Endgame. <laughs> done. Yeah, it's right in there, you know. <laughs> Just deal with the whole thing straight away. It's done. No it's second film. Dead. Everything's grand now, you know. No I'm second film. Looking out the window, case of scared. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake, John! You've actually given me. Their one job is to plane. stay in the air. This is like complaining that you can drive anywhere and then going. Right, everyone's going to be driving into my house. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, uh, I've had eight people drive into my house. I live in a very dodgy corner, so they take my fence out a lot. So, um, you know, it happens. you got to live in a... John's right. John's definitely going to die via an aircraft before the next episode of the podcast. How funny would that be if it did, though? Did anybody here, right? I'll give you John's address if you're a pilot and you can dive bomb his house and okay. shit him up. No, it's it's just no, like, okay, I... say the same thing. You know, I was about to say, imagine the same thing but with submarines, but no, that'd be way less bad because you can't crash a submarine into someone's house. So that's fine. Like, uh, I'd be happier Sponge if all Bob, these hobby bitch. pilots became hobby submarinists instead. And they all just uh-huh. had their own private submarine and they just fucked off and navigated John, by the John, ocean floor. John, you know how that's, you know that's worse, right? No, it's not because all they can kill is themselves. They can't kill anybody else. Okay, yeah, someone flying a Cessna isn't going to kill you. Oh, he tried, sorry, are you sorry. saying if I'm walking down the street and a Cessna crashes into me, I'm yeah, fighting no, I've crumbles gotta, against my it's skin? It's not going to crash into you. You know why? Because air travel's the safest thing. Ever. I, sorry, I've got, to, I've got to stop recording. A Cessna just hit my house. I think it's damaged one roof tile. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Carry on. Literally, John, like... <laughs> you seem to be under the impression that Cessnas are, like, made out of uh, puppies, kisses, and tissue paper. No, they're basically made out of tissue paper. They li- basically are... The, the, they're so light, and they are not structurally sound at all. They're just meant to fly. If they hit anything, well, okay, they're going uh, to break. That's interesting. So how, how do they fly? What, what makes them fly? Is there an engine? Yes. What's the engine made out of? Metal. Oh, that's interesting. And what's on the front of that thing? Like, it's a propeller of some description. John, is it rotating by any chance? John, so you're what's saying, made out so of? you're saying that in a really specific instance where a plane hits you, but the propeller's the first thing that hits you, and it doesn't hit anything else first. That's the one instance you're worried about. No, I don't know. Just in general, like my home, if something that's got a massive fuck ass engine with a spinning propeller that's going at thousands of RPM John, hits my house, yes, I'm worried. John, birds break those propellers. Birds. Cessnas, I've looked it up, weigh less than smart cars. Yeah, but I don't trust them either. Those John. fucking <laughs> robot twats. John. I'm actually, I actually, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, a smart car parked outside my house. I could get my car out and I just lifted it up and moved it, John. It's, they're not like a... <laughs> the thing is, John, pl- planes are like, so, it, they're so aggressively safe. That's why there's never any, re- there's never any air accidents. There's barely any. There's like uh, 9-11. There has been, there have been certain fairly major world-changing ones. No, there's been very large-scale ones, but in the gra- like, there's there's very few air accidents a year. Even they did have to pull out an entire like line of Boeing's out of service because they kept crashing, two and of killing them. everyone. There were two accidents. Two. Yes, and then they th- worried they were, were so worried there might be more. Yes, they had to ground the entire the fleet. Air, the air travel, the, the entire industry is so safety conscious that even two crashes is too many. Look which at is yes, yes. Are you saying that that 
that's overly cautious? No, I'm saying yes. that's why you should be. Carriers I'm full of saying people that that's and killing everyone no, on board. My point is that this is a dead good... each. That was John, overly you're cautious. You're not listening to me. My point is that yes, that's incredibly cautious, and that's why air travel's really no, it's safe. Not. Because it's the absolute bare minimum. Except, John, I, my point is that air travel's really safe. You just said that a plane fucking crashed and then they just kept the same plane flying. Then another one crashed. Oh, maybe we should do something now. Now the death counts into the thousands. Maybe we should look into it this. It wasn't in the thousands. Okay, it was in the high hundreds. Yeah, but look, the point is, John. Aircraft, oh, aircraft. okay. As long as it doesn't cross the magic four-digit number, John, the point Captain is, Grim John, Reaper the over the here point is, is like, air travel fine. is incredibly safe. We haven't even killed safe. four. We haven't even killed a thousand people yet. Keep them flying, lads. Yeah, we don't need to bother knowing your flight plan. John, Have fun John, up there. The air travel industry is, imagine the equivalent of like, there's one drunk, there's like two drunk driving accidents. They are, we're just going to ban drinking altogether. That's the equivalent of the air travel industry. In that any any time an accident happens, they basically stop it ever happening again. And that's why air travel's so aggressively safe. Aside from the time we just describing where the same thing took down two planes in a row. Yeah, I'm saying, like, yeah, sometimes things happen a couple of times. But they mm. are always resolved. Well, I mean, I mean so like, Concorde's the great example, isn't it? Because Concorde was pretty safe and all right. I miss Concorde. Bit over it budget, really cool. And then in the year 2001, crashed and killed everybody. And then they went, okay, no more Concorde. Yeah, I missed them. They should have just made that them better. tires were shit. I think that's... I, just ty Concord's tires, like, exploded, like, every fucking time they took off or something. It was hilarious. What very good tires. <laughs> I think Etra. I read somewhere that they were just going to have to stop it anyway because they just couldn't make the economics of it work. Well, it was yeah, too expensive. Yeah. Too expensive to also fly. too loud. Mm. <laughs> too beautiful. It did cause, it too... did cause a massive, yes, explosion thing that everyone in the world heard. That's, oh, yeah, not... that's how the, that. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, that. I forgot it was Krakatoa, wasn't it? In the Concord, <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. Everyone in the world heard. Sweet, innocent, poor John. Everyone reasonably nearby in the world. <laughs> so not everyone in the world. <laughs> it's like dealing with a fucking toddler talking to John sometimes. <laughs> everyone in the world heard it. Was it just the people who lived in Shoreditch? I'm gonna be killed uh, yeah. by a Cessna, quick. <laughs> I'm just saying we ban everybody from having private planes and we give them private submarines as compensation. Uh-huh. So what that if you way wanna... they can still have their they can still have their, live their dumb I'm a captain fantasy out, except they're only gonna get themselves killed when they fuck. John, up. this sounds like a bit of a straw man argument. I wanted to be a pilot. That's what I was gonna be as a kid. I do Same. I do pictures of planes. I wanted to be an I architect. Went, I wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> But it turned out did. at the age of 14, I learned I was terrible at technical drawing. So that dream died fast. You know who is an architect? Orange Cassidy. Really? He's, he's legit. Yeah, he's legitimately an architect. He's, one of, he's a wrestler, John. He's a wrestler from AW. John, do I, why don't you watch the wrestling? Uh, I, 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 it's I not, not enough historical time. accuracy. I, don't Come on, I, mean, I mean, what's more Grecian than... Oily men grappling each other, you know. I, know, I, I admire it as a kind of a blend of sport and theatre. I think it's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, you should watch it. For we'll context, John, Orange Cassidy, he wears uh, junk shorts, and the actor is he's really lazy. So when he fights, he has his hands in his pockets. He just sort of slightly kicks people. He's very good. Yeah, his his gimmick is he's lazy, mm -hmm. and then he'll try if he really wants something. He'll try. Sorry, you're sad when you're like, oh, I'm going to Clock boy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I don't. I want to be clear. I'm yeah, not, like, John, sneering you'd like wrestling because like there's a whole. Like, oh, you know it's not real, John, yeah. don't you? It's like I really admire something that's a blend of very. John, John, John watch John, the John. rumble. In... Watch the rumble. It's, there's a clock oh. running through the entire thing. No, even better. Every Ooh, match has the timekeeper's area. It does have the timekeeper's area? AEW <gasps> has thirty minute time limits for every match. John, you could watch me. I'd like to be one. I'd like to be one of those timekeepers. Actually, that feels like halfway to being a time priest. They get a bell. You could, ring, you could ring the bell as well, John. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, you like a bell, don't you, John? I do. <laughs> yeah, is it, is it nap time? Are we getting close to nap time, John? It's just not what the bell is for. The bell is for the, the extremely important, you know, separation of different times. Well, one What's of which your... may be nap time, but it's not on, you know, on all occasions. Do you think, you know what John... I'd like to be a judge of? I'd like, to be, uh, I'd like to be a judge in a really boring Olympic sport like curling. That sounds fun. Hey, we have to care about curling because we won it or didn't once in one Winter Olympics. And now if you say you don't like it, you're killed. I think curling's really fun. I'm going to buy you the, one of those uh, those bells that says ring for sex on it, John, just to see if you'll touch it or not. I wonder <laughs> if you'll panic. John will touch it. I don't think he will. John doesn't strike me as a sex haver. 
You've, you've already, we've already had this discussion. No, we had the nude discussion. I don't think he's a sex haver. <laughs> it's got a very gent- quiet. A, gen- a gentleman does not go on to the roof of Lincoln College, Oxford, and tell. <laughs> oh, the fingering incident. <laughs> not sex, John. Just fingering, isn't it? Halfway there. At best. On prayer. Halfway there. <laughs> Look, it would be. It would You're all the way there. You just brought the wrong vehicle. All the ladies involved for me to tell to, to give any more details. Both. Anyway, moving swiftly on. <laughs> What was your point about wanting to be a pilot? You, you trailed off. Yeah, I you wanted to be a pilot. Because apparently you wanted to drive into my house, you twat. I just, I just did. And then I was like, I'm going to get the thing. And they were like, your eyesight's too bad. You can't do it. And that was the end. Do you want to know a fun fact, John? <laughs> you, you need more than GCSEs to become a pilot, which ruled you out. I no. don't have good enough eyesight <laughs> to be able to drive. <laughs> do you know that? I don't have eyesight good enough to be able to drive. Yeah, that tracks. Is that true? Yeah, you have to be able to read a license plate from 20 meters. Do you have not have a driving license because you just can't see well enough? He can't yeah, see I, anything. I, I was just, I'm, Johnny, I'm I reading the stuff. If you're wearing glasses, you were fine. No, God. No, I, 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 my glasses are like get me some of the fucking way there, but they're still not good enough to let me read super far distance. Are you saying that there literally aren't glasses strong enough to let you see? There are, but I'd have to swap between long range and short range. Like in the one oh. that does everything, I can't do that. So it's like you have so to you're, you're simultaneously short years. and long sighted. My vision is I'm plus eight and a half, plus nine. I think my vision is it's got worse recently. So like there's 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 one like optimal distance, maybe like thirty feet away from you, where you can see and everything closer or further away is just. I there is no distance like someone's I turned depth see. of field in a game up to eleven. It's 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 my my original my original glasses that I had when I was a kid. Um, but the first few pairs were almost an inch thick. No, that's just you. You're just saying that no, for humor. Genuinely, effect. No, John, he's not no, joking. I'm not going to joking. <laughs> that can't be true. No, that's he's impossible. Not joking. He's not joking. Like fucking magnifying glasses aren't that thick. Well, I because I've only got I've only I've got less than ninety uh, degree field of view when I got my glasses on. So if I if I'm if I'm looking at my middle monitor now, I can see less than half of the other two flanking monitors, and that's it. And then beyond that is nothing. I can't see anything because there's like the rim of the glasses, and then there's nothing. I don't think Does you truly appreciate like... how da- how bad his eyesight is, John. Uh, my eyesight is fucking terrible. I've tried his well, glasses based on. on everything I... shit. <clears throat> based on everything I know from superhero, like, <laughs> literature and media, <laughs> presumably this means you either have super hearing or super smell or something. Uh, no. No, but that, that happens. I've got if supervision. If you've got one bad sense, you have superpowers in the others. That's how got, that works. I've got supervision. <laughs> As if someone comes around every few days and make sure I've got, I've got dinners and stuff. And haven't set everything on fire but haven't noticed yet. Yeah. Mm. That's my um, job. I... <laughs> There's a wibbly orange thing over there, but I'm really not sure what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a problem. It might it might just be a cat that's broken in or it could be a fire. Jen, you're not 100% on this. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't actually see the fucking... Yeah, I don't get 20-20 vision out of it. Okay, I think it's definitely better you don't have a plane. Yeah, but here's the thing, John, the tunnel near you. You know what I've done? I have flown Got a Cessna. Got a pilot's license. No, I have flown a Cessna with VFR flight rules. As in, like, can you can just anyone do it if they've got, like, a, a qualified person, like, sitting with... Well, a yeah, I did, I, did, I, did, I, did a, I did a lesson. Yeah, I did a couple of lessons. Okay, well, I assume that works. Like, is it the same as, like, you know, like a special car that driving instructors have, where even though you're driving, they've got all mirrored controls next to you, so John, have yeah, you if ever... they need to, John, they can just sorry. take control instantly. John, have you planes, ever seen John. the fucking cockpit of a plane? Every single plane <laughs> just, is that. What the fuck planes, are you talking John. about? Well, I guess that's true, actually. Yeah, I've never thought about <laughs> it. Every plane is that. Every what single was... plane. <laughs> That's true. I just never thought about it. Oh, <laughs> shit. Shit. I just looked like, oh, I didn't know what it meant. Because 2020 is the American style of vision marking. Mm-hmm. And in this country, we have like plus eight and stuff. Mm-hmm. So 2020 vision means that you can clearly see at 20 feet what should normally be seen at 20 feet. Yeah. So if you have 2100 vision, that means you have to be as close as 20 feet to see what a person with normal vision can see at 100 feet. I have okay. 2200 vision. That sounds bad. So what people could clearly see, 200, I've got to be like 20 feet away. I don't... It's bad. I don't have good eyes. I've got very bad eyes. I thought the 2020 scale was just out of 20, like a score for your vision. <laughs> like if someone could see mostly pretty well, like my vision's pretty good, but maybe a tiny bit blurry at really long range. So, you know, I'm 19 out of 20. I'm 19, 20. 
You know, yeah. Claire's maybe down towards 12, 20. She needs some thick glasses, the but key, it's not so no, The bad. key point, though, here is that 2020 vision is not 100%. It's just, at le- like they just said that's enough. You can have way higher than 2020 vision. Yeah. You know, most people have 2020 vision. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're a superhero who can see something... No. But as it, if it was as clear as twenty feet away, but from a hundred feet away. Well, yeah, but you're not. Well, I've, I've, like you've got Superman zoom in vision. But like, if I, I for example, wait, can, did Superman have the ability to zoom in? Was that a Superman thing? I know he had X-ray, but could he zoom in? You can do it. Well, he's quite close. Simple. He was fast, wasn't he? He could just get closer. <laughs> That's true. Well, every time it, Superman it zoomed in, he actually redundant. flew down and flew back up very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, let's just put it this way: Superman did wear glasses, yeah. Well, they, yeah, they didn't but have didn't anything. A bit of blank frames. Don't know how no one noticed, really. Oh, well, presumably they were just like with perfectly smooth glass in yeah. them, and just no one noticed that. Yeah. I mean, I'd like my because I can't my my eyes are so bad I can't get laser eye uh, surgery. I'd be it, willing to give it a shot. Well, they say because I I can't get it done. It won't go down to eight. I can't get it down to like, I think it was four. They said I could get to. Uh, so I could I could like make my vision better, but like I still have to wear fucking glasses. And also, there's a five percent chance per eye that you'll go permanently blind. That seems like quite a high chance. Yeah, yeah. That's, it kind of put me off a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so I've got because my glasses are really fucked because I've got um, uh, astigmatism. I've got wobbly bent eyes. I've got all this sort of shit. But until uh, I lived in Finland a few years back, I didn't know how the distance worked. Because I assumed, like everybody, when you looked into the distance, you waited two or three seconds for the two images to go together so you could see what, every, see what was in the distance. No, that's not how it works. No, that's not how that fucking works! <laughs> I've heard a lot of no, stories. No, you just look that, yeah. over there and you see it. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I know. And maybe I'm very it's a tiny bit blurry if it's really far away, but like most it's fine. I've had so many stories of Daniel thinking something was a perfectly normal thing that everyone did for eyesight and then realising <laughs> far too late that it wasn't. In all fairness, I can't. I can't. I, I'm partially colorblind, so I can't. I can't throw stones. You, you shouldn't throw stones. Mm-hmm. You should. It's, 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 it's a very small race. It's just a small amount of reds, browns, and greys all look identical to me. I've, oh uh, no! I've got perfect. New, Ve- New Vegas looks very grey. Uh, wait. Oh no! I'm legally blind. <laughs> That's probably good. You can probably get all sorts of like special dispensations oh my God. and when, good parking when, when, spaces. Yeah, when shit. Rebecca gets that driving license, she can get a card. Tw- 20, oh, 20 over 200 is the legal blindness. It's where legal blindness starts. So if I don't have my oh, glasses sweet. on, I'm legally There's blind. There's got to be some perks to that. I used to always joke about that, but I've just re- literally just <laughs> discovered it's true. <laughs> Like, you know, get, get just, you know, you should be able to like walk to the front of the queue at Disney World or something with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, well, you well, you well, well, get yourself like you know a stick and some sunglasses and whatever. So you know, you know when you go to the opticians and it's got the big big E length. It's got the big E. There are actually other, other letters <laughs> below that. You might be aware of them. But with like my glasses off, there, there's I also can't a pair of read. Of progressively small letters that most people can see. With my glasses off, I can't read the E at the top or the A or whatever letter. I can't read the top letter with it off. My glasses. It's an off. eight. No, legitimately, right. I have tried on Daniel's glasses a few times and it's horrifying <laughs> because it's like it's like your world is compressed into a small point. Yeah. That you could never weird, escape from. And somehow you're right. So I have perfect vision. And when I wear Ooh, those glasses, my fucking eyes... Fucking rub it in, you cunt. Yeah, all right. Oh, we're perfect vision. I went to the opticians uh, for a thing because whenever I was like at the uh, at the theatre, um, the stage was always blurry. And I went and they were like, oh, we can give you glasses for that. And I went, what? And they went, oh, it's plus 0.3 on one eye. Oh. And I went, all right. So I got yeah, glasses I'm like, zero, I'm, like 0. 0.5. I'm about the same. No, it's only on one eye. And then whenever I've had subsequent glasses uh, eye tests, they've said, they, they've said I actually don't have that. So I was apparently done wrong the first time. Yeah, I'm, I'm the tiniest bit long in one eye and the tiniest bit short in the other, like 0.5 and 0.3, but I just don't carry to live with that. Yeah, the point here, normal eyesight. When I put on Dan's yeah. glasses, it basically goes, ah, oh, it assumes I have Daniel's eyes, obviously. Yeah. So <laughs> my eyes get crossed and I can't see anything in front of me at all. Mm. Yeah, that's because I've got a, a special thing called prism, which corrects the distance thing. And this is a point. This is why, like, lenses... For stuff like the index don't work for you, isn't it? Like special lenses. Yeah, I can't get lenses to go. This is why I can play when people are like, oh, just get lenses for the index. I literally can't get them. 
Actually, no, that's not true anymore because there are some that do. You can now get prism in them. But they're really expensive. You can get a certain prism. They are so ludicrously expensive. Oh, they're expensive. like 400, 300 quid or something. For something and the chances are, like, I have to. When I get a new pair of glasses, it takes several trips to be able to get them right because they're such a fat. And your eyesight's changing fairly. I wouldn't uh, say that. Yeah, it's. But... It's getting worse. Frequently slowly. enough, that's spending four hundred pounds in some ins inserts for a one specific VR headset. Doesn't you see. Seem this like is probably why Dan's not scared of small planes because he's never seen one. As far as he's concerned, <laughs> he's like, oh, it's just... he, he just looks up them. at the sky. He's just a vaguely grey blue thing. He's not aware how many Cessnas there are up there, Dan. You could be <laughs> seventeen, dangerously close to your house right now, and you'd have no fucking yeah, it's clue. Not very you know, I can check how many there are. Oh well, yeah. fucking don't. Well, I assume there's like a special. Yeah, is it, Check out many there are over John's house. I like, don't give a shit. Oh, well, they're all fucking available. tracked. Obviously, you can. There's an app, John. If you want to see where all the Cessnas are and check if they're not near your house, you can. You tell. just see where like literally every plane in the world is at any point. Is that just public? Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. There's a, there's yeah, a, I mean, called, it might as well be public. Website you can called just look it up. I can see. I mean, to be up. honest, I feel. I feel like I like. I, I, I would know if there was a plane dangerous close to my house because I could look outside and see it. So there's there's lots of planes. There's lots of, so there's like, for example, over Wales, there's a bunch of... Uh, like here, there's there's G L O O R from the Shropshire Aero Club. That's clearly doing. Oh VFR shit, we found Shropshire. Yeah, it's clearly doing some weird VFR flying because its flight path is just like wiggly wobbly, fucking all over the place. Because you're clearly looking at shit. Uh, there's a couple <laughs> of gliders around in true above Shrewsbury. There is. Wait, how do how do they track gliders? Everything's got a fucking transponder on it. Do drones have transponders on them? No, but this is a whole contention because drones. Oh shit! I've, I've walked. I've walked into the flipping air flight T. Well, no, this, okay. is the, this is the thing: to, to to fly drones over a certain weight, you basically have to almost treat them as light airplanes. Well, that seems fair to me, to be honest. It does, but that's why uh, drones are hard to thingy now. Like, there's loads what of about like kites. Do you have to have a transponder on your kite? No, kites are like breaking the law as a kite. <laughs> No. Kites don't have should, should we mention drones at this point? Because there's a lot of walls about drones. Fucking hell's bells. Daniel? Yeah. That's what we just said. I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> I must I must admit I'm actually looking at shit and moving my glasses on and off, being like, fuck, I'm so blind. <laughs> <laughs> this is a revelation to you. <laughs> Everything's so much bigger with oh, my glasses it's, it's, on. It's just the yeah. it's just, just the podcats of revelation standing there going, shit, I had no idea I was so blind. I'm sitting here, shit. I'm sitting here going like, shit, I had no idea planes were about to kill me. Yeah. Matt, Matt, what are you what's your re terrifying revelation of yeah, today? Yeah, Matt, what are you, you going to re what, what, reveal? What nightmarish revelation are you, are you having today? Have you been pooing blood or anything? No, I'm all right. I'm feeling all right. Grand. Wait, you're not supposed to do that. I'm feeling, I'm feeling A-OK. -okay. If um, it's red, it's fine. It's probably an anal fissure. But if it's like darker, you've probably got something dodgy going. You know what's annoying? That. That's, 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 you've said that to me before. That's what's annoying. <laughs> you've made that joke before. To me. It's not a joke. It's and not exactly. A joke. That's, that's what makes it worse. Medical information. That's what makes it worse. You've said that to me multiple times. Look, if you're going to eat a kebab, you've got to expect the risks. Oh, there's a, there's a plane above your dad's house. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, it's a, it, what is it? It's a, it's a Piper. It's not a Cessna. It's a Piper. Oh, it's a Billy. Plane. Yeah. Oh my God. You know the plane from fucking, what was that plane that was in that kid's show with all the fucking polka dots on it? The plane that was in that kid's show. You're young. Your kid's shows are different to us. Exactly. You talk, no, are you I, talking about I didn't the... see it, but I just, it's a thing. I've never seen I, it. I, it's a thing. I grew up, I grew up in the era, you know, sort of like Tots TV. John grew up in the era of Finger Mouse. You grew up in the era of I don't know the the Brazzle Dazzle. I remember Tots TV. The problem, no, the, the problem uh, was. The, the of course, you liked it. I grew up in the best era of kids' cartoons. I got, in it. I got the X Men cartoon, the uh, the Spider Man cartoon. Oh God! They Wait, sorry, sorry. You, if you remember Touch TV, you remember distinctly. It had, it had a French slice in it, didn't it, John? Did that waken anything in you, do you think? Maybe that explains everything. Who knows? <laughs> I'm a Touch. You're sweet as a Touch. Um, <laughs> Googling this thing. Come outside. It was a good way of introducing children to France. Come outside. To, to France, Ed, from 93 to 97. Oh, so when I was a grown-up. Well, I haven't seen it. <laughs> wow. But my point is that it has a... Basically, it's about... A come outside is a... If it's a plane that's outside flying around saying, come outside, that's some junky no, intro shit. That thing's gonna, it's, it's a plane. That's going to attack you. It's, 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 it's like a woman and her dog, right? And they go, oh, shit, we've got to go on an adventure. And they run out to the field that they live next to it and they get in a literal plane. Like they have a plane. Oh, in the show. I'm aware of that plane. Yeah. Yeah, it's that. It's one of those, but not painted with polka dots. That's what's flying over your dad's house. 
I'm yeah, trying to find I out how much that. a Cessna costs, and they won't bloody tell me. You can, you can find out. The website out. refuses to say. Well, I'm new. Yeah, look on say... eBay. Also, I like that you said some lady when it's fucking Linda uh, Barron. Cheaper planes, John, are like f can be like 30, 40,000. I like, a, a cheap plane is about the price of a luxury car. 34. I, I, feel like, I feel like there should be more, more of a barrier to that. John, the barrier to entry is that you have to pay tens of thousands to get a license. That's, that's the barrier to entry. It's called qualifications, which I don't know anything about, obviously, but is a thing. How much do you get a pilot's license? Like, literally, so D Daniel will appreciate this as well in the same thing as I wanted to be a pilot. And um, when I looked into it, went, oh, oh, yeah. oh, because mm. that's the thing. Even if you had perfect eyes like Daniel, you still would not be a pilot, I imagine. Oh, yeah, hundred, it, costs, it costs over £100,000 to become a uh, commercial airline pilot. Yeah. But if you consider how much property costs these days, what if rather than buying a house, you bought a plane and just lived in it? Well, you probably have to pay quite a bit more in um, fuel than a normal house. True, but you also don't have to pay council tax. The two council. Well, no, actually, up. you have to pay the airport that you're you have the plane in. There is. What oh my you... god! Right, there's a fucking there's a there's a little town in America somewhere. Obviously, it's in America that um, all the streets are literally aircraft taxiways, and they have massive garages for each of the houses, and there's a little plane in each of them, and there's a runway, and everyone just goes out on the planes. Are you confusing? Oh, no, that's a real the place. Jetsons. The Jetsons. Yeah, no, no, that's a real, real place. It's like for aircraft enthusiasts, and they all live there in the, on a runway. Now you see that that's a that's a place I'd be scared about a plane crashing in my house. No, I'd be scared about that. It's America. I'm scared of everything there. I'd be scared to eat food or drink water there, let alone someone crashing. Like that's mm -hmm. that's a problem later. That's a problem. They have got the America rant. Portion. Okay, hang on. You were telling me it was in the tens of thousands. I'm seeing here that like a pre-owned Cessna is like three hundred thousand dollars. What type of Cessna are you looking at? Uh, um, a pre-owned modern one seven two. Um, that's not one seven two. A lot of them get big overhauls and stuff. They're expensive new. Hmm. I mean, you... I mean, like this. That worries me even more. Like, are you saying there's like a big second-hand market of cheap knackered Cessnas that the people who can barely afford to be a pilot just take up, even though they're knackered? All, all parts in aircraft, they only have they have a very specific service life that they can't go over, and they have to replace them in that service life. And some stuff they sell. You know, some planes get sold cheap near the end of their service life simply because in you know. 10,000 miles or whatever, or 10,000 running hours, they'll have to replace yeah. a load of the parts. You, you okay, can, this this, you can this buy... makes me even scared, more scared because now I know there's an entire class of aeroplane that are really cheap, that the cheap asses who could only just afford to get the aero buying and they're probably third-hand, incredibly worn down Again, John. and about to fall out of the sky John. into my house. Most aircraft are third fucking hand. Very few aircraft are ever bought new. That's why aircraft are in service. Well, someone has to buy years. them new, otherwise they can't get to be third hand. Not very Someone's many. buying them. Yeah, well, yeah, hey, um, in 2011, a Harrier sold on eBay for 70,000. A Harrier for 70k. I mean, that's pretty good. In fact, ha wait, how can most planes be third hand? Where do they all come from? Because at some point they all had to be first hand. Well, yeah, at some point. But that's, this is the thing. Most Are you saying that all planes were just made in the 1980s and since then, I, now we don't make I any actually, anymore? you joke, but genuinely, a lot of the jetliners <laughs> that are being used were made in the 80s, yeah. Shit, have I just accidentally done a true fact? Yeah, most of have. This is a Holy shit, that's no, even more terrifying. Is, I should have no, got a proper plane. At least a, it was no. no. This is a big thing with 747s, because 747s are all being... Well, how old are they? They, all of them were made in the 70s and 80s. Basically, every what? single 747 flying was yeah! from the 80s. I'm never flying they were anywhere about again. Years old. That's why they're all at the end of their service life. That's why they're all being retired because they don't want new I'm ones. I'm going to die on a plane. Planes, John. <laughs> planes, especially big planes like that, their lifetime is not based on how many miles it flies. It's based on how many single flights it does. It's based on how many times you go up and pressurize it. That's why long, no, that big, makes long. Sense. Haul. That's really interesting. That's, what, that that's, makes sense. that's why you know short haul carriers like Ryanair, who are doing like five flights a day, their planes last way less time than the big carriers because they might, you know, British Airways might only be. So doing the biggest one. stress that you put in a plane is when it like gains and lowers the weight pressure. Yeah, pressure. You pressurize the cabin. Under pressure. But hang on, but wait, 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 hang on. But I understand that that would be true for submarines because there's fuck tons of pressure down there. But surely the different when you're going up, you're going from. One atmosphere towards zero atmospheres. Yeah, but you still pressurize the plane. I found a website yeah, that sells Boeing pressure. 747s. I could just buy a Boeing 747 if I click this button. You see, I, f I just feel like a plane feels like a bad investment next to a submarine because those fuckers are meant to take like 500 atmospheres of pressure, which is way more. Like you get way more atmospheres per your money. 
John, uh, planes. Yes. As you pointed out, is the opposite. If you go up in a plane, the atmosphere, the actual, the the uh, pressure the atmosphere is at in the ca in the cab cockpit or the cabin is usually that like you're at about six thousand feet. I've, I'm, I've How many atmospheres plane. is that? One? I don't know. I've well, I don't plane. know. You're the one who's sounding like you know what you're talking about. I you know, know the word Cessna or whatever that is. How do they ship a plane to you? If <laughs> you say fly it out. <laughs> <laughs> Delivery driver just yeah, gets yeah, in, just fly this over there. I watched a documentary about this. It's actually a weird... a weird. Just sub... find a field nearby. No, there's a weird <laughs> subset of, of, of delivery plane pilots who have to basically... Because a lot of these short haul planes, they you know, a plane, a lot of planes could only have the range to fly from like London to Paris. But if some, if an aircraft, you know, company in Poland buys a plane from a company in America, they have to get that plane to them, and then they have to do this ridiculous flight where they basically what, like strip, a series of short hops. Yeah, but they have to strip everything out the plane for it to even like get over the sections of water, like from Greenland to Scotland. Sometimes that's a bit too <laughs> long for some of these planes. So there's just this ridiculous industry of these these pilots who have to who have learned how to strip all these planes and do these really long endurance flights to these planes that aren't designed for it to deliver them. <laughs> so can we, can, we just, can we just roll back about 30 minutes to the point where you're saying, uh, John, don't you understand that aircraft are the most safe things in the world? <laughs> so yeah, sometimes planes can't go over water and they can barely, and then sometimes they just kind of don't make it. Yeah, yeah, because but, they, they try John, and cross a bit of water, John, but sometimes they just can't. John, no, and they we're do, not sure whether they're about to crash or John, not. they do make it. You know why? Because lots of maths involved. That's another reason I'm not a pilot, because um, no. But, but the key point here, John, is you know how many of those delivery planes crash? None. None of them crash. I don't know. I, I think we wouldn't hear about it because, like, you, you know, know hear about it. it's it up public, and the pilot was on know, zero You know contract. how you would know you'd hear about it? Because they're all fucking tracked online. And plane nerds are big plane nerds and they will fucking notice. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I can agree that, yeah, covering up a plane that just goes missing would be quite difficult if all planes are just tracked all the time. I mean, saying that, but there was that incident with uh, MH370. But, uh... I I've bought missing. I've bought this yeah. plane. Where am I going to get it delivered to? Well, who was it? What was that? What was the aircraft? That went, what carrier was it worth, Daniel? MH370. Is this the Bermuda Triangle? No. <laughs> no. What were we missing in the Bermuda Triangle? No, it was, nothing. It, it was lost in the, Where's the, the Indian Bermuda Ocean. Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle has the same amount of boat and plane crashes as any other part of the ocean. Oh, that's boring. <laughs> there you go. I've said no, but look, you're like complaining about the fucking world being a disaster of hate. And I'm like, this place that you've actually since childhood. Well, no, I'm just saying, I'm going boats from now on. Look, if I want I'm, to go to the Bermuda, I'm, I'm going on a boat that's a plane. There were two things that I was warned about way more than I should have been when I was a kid. One was quicksand and the other was the Bermuda Triangle. And neither of those fucking things hey, have ever come up. Hey, John, do you want to know a fun fact? This this app I have, right? No, whatever. No, no I don't want to hear this, this app, fun fact so from the it, tone it, of this, your voice. I don't want to know this it. This app is actually used, obviously, by pilots and stuff for planning. Uh, but And because of that, you can turn on stuff like volcanoes. Um, so, for example, there's lots of volcanoes marked because they're currently spitting out ash and you can't fly through the ash clouds. And there's these big areas marked like this bit has ash and don't fly through there. <laughs> Can we mark John's how many, hat? How, how, how like many volcanoes are coming active there? around the world? Um, that are on ash risk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, that feels like more volcanoes eight. they want to be active on the planet. Well, I say, right you now. say active, yeah, it's just that they're, they're spitting out ash. They're not like, they're not hugely that's, erupting. That's, I don't know. I feel like that's, you know, that feels like that's leading in a bad direction. But yeah, but it's called the world just doing shit, John. That's how fucking, that's, a, that's how the Earth's mantle works. There are currently you know, 26 that's just like, Okay, there's a plane, volcanoes. it's out of control, it's speeding straight to your house, but it's still a thousand feet away, so I wouldn't worry too much. There's 26 <laughs> active volcanoes right now with 1,500 potentially active volcanoes that could go out Wait, anytime. what? 26 active volcanoes with 1,500 that are technically active and kind of go on and off. So 1,500 volcanoes might just explode at any moment. Well, yes. explode is a loose term Fucking because they all, they all have different ratios and they all have different terminology for how they... Oh, hang work. on. I've just, checked, I've just checked, John. They're all by your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, basically, John, you're, you're doing straw man arguments like, no, volcanoes! Like, John, you're not going to die from volcano. Yellowstone. Well, I'm going to be honest. As as a classicist, I'm quite aware that many people have died from volcanoes. <laughs> yeah, but you know where you're not living, John? You're not living next <laughs> to a volcano, Vesuvius. are you? I'm not living below Vesuvius. That's, <laughs> that is a point in my favour. Yeah, like it's not, you know, you know, you know how, why a plane's not going to crash into your house, John? Because that doesn't happen. I am living under the sky. Don't tell me I'm not living under the sky because I am. It's such a, like, it's happened maybe like, what, maybe a dozen times in the past, like, several decades. 
You know, that's some comfort to the person, to the poor twat who gets hit by the plane, isn't John, you're more oh, likely that was to, John, you're more likely to walk into a telephone box and get run over by a car and then shit yourself. You're more what likely telephone to... box. There are no telephone John, boxes. You're more... that's, this is my point. You're more likely to die from a staircase-related incident. Well, yeah, that's that's true. The staircase, staircase can be pretty steep. Hey, what's this? this is some ridic- if, okay, I'm just going to say this now. In 2020, there were 137 fatalities due to air travel. In 2019, there were 289. In 2018, 561 people died yeah, because of air travel. Yeah, but how many of them were on the... First of all, very small numbers for a very large industry. Second of all, how many of them were on the ground? Um, I imagine very few. <laughs> They probably go on the ground after they crash. How many were on the ground? How many weren't in the plane, more specifically? If you took out all the ones who were in the plane that had the accident, it's probably very few, if any. It, you have a 1 in 11 million chance of being hit by a plane. Nah, that's too high. No, that's it. That's the number. 1 in, one in 11 million. That's way too high. <laughs> <laughs> that means someone's getting hit by a plane, like, all the time. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> like, that, that is not a... That is not a realistic statistic. There is. Hell, John, here's a convert to you. So back in the, yeah. I don't know, years ago, right? Many, I don't know, 90s or whatever. Um, a, a, a plane, actually, this reinforces your point slightly, but we've, we've went past this. So there's a plane coming to land at LAX and a VFR uh, pilot hit the big plane coming into land. And the big, what? And the big plane, <laughs> the big plane um, span out and then it crashed into someone's house. But here's is the point. This supposed to make me feel better. And oh, yeah, that's the one in eleven million. No, but here's my point, John. Right, this there was a massive plane. This is a big fucking jetliner, and it only yeah. caused it only caused the people in one house to die. No other houses, only one. And you know, what? <laughs> and, and here's the other bit. Here's the other bit, John. Right, here's the other bit. That's never happened again because we learned from it. Yeah. <laughs> and what we started putting stickers on the dashboards of Cessnas saying, "Please don't fly to the side of Boeing." That's exactly. That. That's no, exactly we, what they, we did. they changed. They changed how air traffic control did. They changed how the tracking things. They added um, what's it called? Uh, Daniel wings. Help. Wings. No, th- no, it's the it's a thing. It's <laughs> a flaps. Like wings. It's a thing Wheels. That, it's a thing that if you get close to More another propellers. plane, it's a thing that if you get close to another plane, it will alert both planes independently of air traffic control and tell Air them what bags that inflate so you can't oh, the other it's plane. It's a barge safely. pole, a big Bounce barge off. pole off the front, isn't it? It's a big yeah. barge pole off the front. And it just hits the Actually, other plane. John, yeah. massive elastic band. There was a plane crash caused by a wasp once. Yeah, did that sounds to me as reasonable. Did it get in the but cabin? It wasn't in the plane. The wasp wasn't in the Look, plane. I did, I did want to see oh. a film about a plane that had snakes on it. Yeah, but the wasp, was John, the wasp wasn't in the plane. What does it hit? It didn't hit it. The wasp made its nest in one of the little tubes that, that determine... There's tubes on the outside of the plane, which are what, how the um, pilots determine its speed and, uh, and altitude and stuff like that. And it built its nest in one of them, and it blocked it. So when they were up, they were like, oh, shit, we think we're at 5,000 feet, but they crashed. You see, I'd feel better about submarines, but, yeah, just, just last year, 53 people died in a submarine sinking. Yeah, and so. I, feel, I feel like there's a lot less people going... Like, planes, there's millions... I feel like the submarine risk might actually be higher than the plane yeah, risk. Yeah, there's millions, right. so, millions yeah, of people Yeah, but John, John, today. John, you are right. You're less likely to be hit by a submarine when you're on the street. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the point the is, those people thing. took that took the risk by going into the submarine. They can't hit my house. I mean, unless it's got a lot of speed and a ramp, probably yeah, not. It would need it would need quite a lot of speed. <laughs> but I, here's the it thing: it would need a hell of a run up. Planes, um, most commercial planes don't tend to have nuclear weapons on them, and submarines do. So maybe you are actually more at threat of a submarine. That's a valid point. That's yeah, valid. but that can't happen, right? I mean, that can't like, happen. if a submarine just like explodes, the nuke doesn't go off and create a nuclear explosion. It's not been. Oh, it's a, it's it's a common means, prank, but right? It's a, it's a common right, prank. Right? You say that, to get John, a newbie. That, that would probably cause that would be a dirty bomb. Uh. Yeah, but it's 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 under the ocean, right? I don't live in the no, ocean. John, if 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 a nuke exploded, but it actually it, it wasn't detonated, as in like it, there was just an actual explosion and it didn't detonate the actual nuclear warhead, it would still yeah. release all the radioactive material, and it, that would be a dirty but, like, bomb at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, you know what you know what water does, that be fine. John. Water does a thing called move around. There's a thing called ocean currents, right? And all of that Ooh, radiated, so that would be bad. Yeah, all of that radiated water would kill everything in a minute, and it would kill everything for a very long area around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or make it really big. No, that's not how it's no. John, which would offset the the smaller number of fish. John, the actual volume of fish available would be the same. John, yes. Your chance of getting hit by a plane is one in eleven million. What do you think your chance of getting hit by Where a car is? Where the fuck's that statistic from? Much Daniel? higher. What? Where's that? Where is that statistic from, Daniel? A website that made it up. Uh huh. 
<laughs> how many like, Americans are we going back to the very origin of the, I mean I feel like this is this is a good uh, go back to the original podcast here where I just made up uh, facts about oranges based on Yahoo answers because that feels are way you on too Yahoo high. answers right now how is that too high a, what did 11 million yeah in America okay for, well first of all that that's an important note but second of all that like if it's 1 in 11 million per day no 1 in 11 million in what time scale? Your chance. Your chance of getting Yeah, but there's three, if there's 300 million people in the United States... Matt, he doesn't know. He's that, just that reading means, a stat of Yahoo answers. That means 300 people <laughs> killed by p- being hit by a plane every 30. day. 30. Because of maths. Not every day. In their lifetime. 30 people born in the US right now are going to die because of a plane. Yeah. Not by being hit by a plane on the ground. Just be, being on a plane. No. Being hit by a plane while they're on the ground. People who are alive right now... Have everybody alive right now... 30-ish of them are going to get hit by a plane and kill. That's not very many. No, it's that's fucking not. That's why it's one in 11 million. Okay, that's different. Over the but life- your chance of getting hit and killed by a car, different. chance of getting hit and killed by a car is one in 4,300. That feels higher. <laughs> Can I just, I just need to illustrate something. Um, I've I just Googled. Um, on the 7th of July this year, so just a few months ago, um, <laughs> Woman killed while mowing airfield runway after being struck by a small plane making landing. Just, <laughs> just, mm, which, um, she was on the runway, though. I will say that, John. She wasn't just in her house. I feel like that's the tower's fault. How was that the tower's fault? The tower should know who's working in the airport and not give permission to land until the bloody runway's clear. I, I'm pretty sure she wasn't on the runway. I think the pilot just came in too low too early. Mm-hmm. I mean, the NTSB hasn't finished the um, investigation yet, so... Mm. You know, you're not making me feel better about these Cessna pilots. Well, but look, right, the, the, here's what I'm going to say. Going down, oh, fuck it, runway? I can't find the runway, guys! Ah, splat! In, in the, when the first wave of COVID hit, one in a hundred people was dying from it. So you got one in yeah. hundred versus one in 4,300 versus one in 11 million. So get jabbed, look both ways, and don't fucking worry about it. Unless you're one of the cool it. people who get killed by a plane. That'd be a rad way to fucking... It'd be so funny if one of us get hit by a plane after this. Because then <laughs> this podcast will be like spread week. everywhere. Ah, oh. ah, ah, ah. I'm looking up statistics. It's playing a video. Stop playing a video. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at some odds of dying shot and it's playing a fucking... Oh, wait, I'm getting a thing. Cause of death. Um. Ah, yes. So it's got, for example, heart disease, one in six. And at the bottom here, fuck. Uh, <laughs> at the bottom here, railway passenger and plas- passenger on airplane has too few deaths to actually make a ratio of. However, uh, lightning is one in uh, 138. So you're more likely to be killed by a lightning strike, um, or a, a wasp sting, or a cataclysmic storm. They put it in bold. Um, <laughs> I'd actually rather die to lightning. Electrocution, radiation, or extreme temperature or pressure. That's a lie. Because I feel like lightning, it's either like the most badass way to die. And if you survive, you get those really cool patterns up your arm. Um, accidental gun discharge, obviously. But higher, more likely than that is bicyclist. Don't ride a bicycle, kids. You'll die. <laughs> like, imagine if you go into a bar and you start chatting to a woman and she says, oh, yeah, I really like your tattoos. You go, oh, that's just a tattoo. I just survived a lightning strike. It wouldn't look like a I mean, fucking hell. You're getting laid. Okay, John, that'll be three. But I don't... No, I don't, I don't think it's... Um... <laughs> I don't. I don't think that'll happen because I think you'll be disfigured, John, when you get struck by lightning. Horribly, you look like you look like a, a ghoul from Fallout. I think if you get struck by lightning, just your luck. Body on the face. Every other part of your body is fine, except also your penis, which was blown off. It just shot away. <laughs> I could miss that. Pinned <laughs> off. <laughs> just, just, like, like a, a bottle rocket, just pole. whizzing off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> just skims across the ground, gone into into a wall. <laughs> Like a wet sausage being thrown against a bus. Just gone. <laughs> That's a very specific image. <laughs> oh, too specific yeah. image, actually. Come to think That'll of. be your luck, John. So, yeah. It's probably not a good idea to get struck by lightning. Um, There's things anything. you can do to encourage that, though. You can tip the scales. Like a plane, it's very hard to... Well, unless you go and live in that stupid town, America. There's not much you can do to increase your chances of being hit by a plane. But lightning, you can up your chances significantly think... there with the right clothing I mean, and the right John, weather. I disagree. You, you can go to a high place def- while holding a metal no, pole. You can definitely increase your chances by hit, being hit by a plane by going on standing on a runway. 
Yeah, that's true. Also, if like you put a banner, will try and stop me. Put a banner on your house that says "All plane drivers are wankers." That might <laughs> increase it slightly. Yeah. Oh, how dare he? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just right on the roof. I fucking dare you, Cessna twat. Could you, could you imagine you're on a, on a a big plane and you just hear bong? Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. We've just read something on the roof of somebody's house, and we're going to have to go and teach this motherfucker a lesson. <laughs> No, that was actually a good pilot voice. You missed your calling. I know. That I was, was a good captain it. voice. I, I felt reassured. Yeah, I was about to kill you all, and you felt reassured. I was ready for it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That's my voice. You know, I could. I could yeah, you know what? That's really good. I'd be willing to accept being smashed into a house for petty revenge if that voice told me you were John, I think. You, I think. Take, I think you've it. got it, John. Try and do a little pilot's voice. Let's see if you've got it as well. Uh, what, 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 what should I be announcing? Just that um, there's a big tornado and you've accidentally flown into it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This no, is your captain no, speaking. No. <laughs> Fucking, we die. We're dead. I'd panic immediately. I'd be hitting the tray table with my face. You've got to have a, you've got to have a calm and slow sense of clarity, yeah. John. Okay, well, you do it, Matt, because you've got, a, you've got shit on, Matt, voice for go. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, <laughs> flown into a small tornado. I mean... I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely a cheap airline. That's the yeah. first vote. No, you've got to understand, right? I have flown on planes a lot, and almost all of them were on Ryanair. So my, my basis oh, here yeah, is yeah. slow. <laughs> you know, I've been on probably at least uh, one, maybe, maybe one, two thousand flights in my life. Right. 99% Ryan of them Ryanair. Yeah, you, you, the flight sure on the caps is just like, well, I've just got my Cessna license. <laughs> I don't really know what most of these buttons do, but I'll give it my best shot. You, you Good luck, everybody. Job, but, yeah, cheap carriers tend to have very young, first-time qualified pilots. <laughs> I do I do enjoy Ryanair, because when the plane lands, everyone gives a genuine round of applause. <laughs> for, for... Yeah, every fucking time. Because they're happy to be yeah. not but, no, dead. They, yeah. always oh, land so hot. they always land so fucking steep and so fast, and you just go, boom, and then it just... <laughs> Because they just come in really fast and hot, especially when you go into when I was going from the pool to dumping, because the flight's only twenty five minutes, so they just don't. It just sounds like something like the co-pilot just just double dog dares the pilot to do. <laughs> Literally, it does feel like it, and then they apologise for the rough landing every time, <laughs> <laughs> every single time. And I was like, hey! I'm like, oh. You see, I feel like this is something I should be scared of as well. Ryan airplanes. Well, well, actually, Ryan Air's safety record is one of the best in the world. Interestingly. Yeah, you're just more likely to be stabbed on the plane. Yeah, then you actually genuinely you're more likely to have an incident on the plane from another passenger than the <laughs> plane itself. Because Ryanair um, uh, maintenance is really expensive, so Ryanair and, and keep and taking a plane out to have to do a big overhaul to it is expensive and get it off. So they actually keep their planes really well maintained. So they don't ever have to pull them out. So they're actually quite good. With I'd like I like the fact that I I would be the best pilot here, and that's good to know considering I can't see. I don't. Well, mm. I think there's a difference between best pilot and best voice for a pilot. Yeah. Those no, I, I think that's everything. Qualification. I think you want to keep everybody calm and well. It's I mean, you, the co-pilot you were comfortable. Voice announcement anyway. You could be a good co-pilot. No, you mm. get the captain does the initial one. Hello, I'm the captain. Oh, always. Welcome aboard this flight seven 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 seven. No, oh, it's most of the Ryanair right ones. Half over half the time it was a co-pilot. Yeah, because the pilot's yeah, the pilot's drunk on Ryan. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The co-pilot is the pilot. The actual pilot hasn't turned up. He's woken uh, up in some there was fucking... A, there's a great fucking... There's, yeah, yeah, there's cool. a great air crash. No, there's one where the, there's, there's a Russian pilot. He's really fucking pissed on Valkyrie. He did crash the plane. There was a Rus- <laughs> there was there was a Russian Air Force plane that used literal vodka as in its cooling system. Yeah, and the cooling system suspiciously kept breaking because all of the vodka was drained out of it. <laughs> Legitimately, that was a real thing. Okay, here's interesting. So, the what number of episode? hovercraft fatalities is really low. Well, yeah, because there's like five hovercraft. Yeah, and they exactly. kill like eight people like each. It's a safe way to travel in absolute terms. I guess, but like, you know. Did the... you know that 25% of all hovercraft have been involved in a fatal accident? That's possibly true. Yeah, absolutely. it's not true. I made it up, but it feels real because yeah. hovercrafts are so fucking ludicrously dangerous. This is the thing. I could say that, oh, there's only there's there's been zero deaths on a crano plans in the past two decades, which is technically true. Quite a lot of deaths on horses. Horses are probably not a safe way to no. drive. I say bicycles. I just feel like I know I shouldn't be, but I'm more impressed by absolute deaths than I am by percentage deaths. So Abs- absolute deaths where they don't need to check they're dead. It's when their head comes off or something. That's an absolute death. So you know, the fact there's been no hovercraft deaths in the past five years means I assume hovercrafts are completely one hundred percent safe. 
Oh, no one's got a hovercraft because they're for wankers. Hovercraft's a and great invention. And also, there was some, there were some instances where a lot of people died in the seventies. Yeah, I mean, a hovercraft's like, great. I assume it's like they're now safe. It's like you're going forward and you want to turn left, so you turn left, and now you're going both forward and left. And eventually, if you keep going that way, you'll be going still I know just how forward hovercraft and left. Works. I played Diddy Kong Racing, all right? <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah. Sorry, that bastion of physics must have passed me by. Most of my hovercraft experience was from the world in San Andreas, honestly. <laughs> you got you got to play a car, a hovercraft, or a plane. It was a very strange game, Diddy Kong Racing. I would have picked the plane. Seems quicker. Yeah, and safer. Mm. No, the, the plane was the objectively faster because not only could you use the mid-air speed-up zippers, if you squish the plane's nose to the ground, you got to just use the ground ones too. <laughs> so you just got to use everybody's zippers. It was great. That sounds useful. It mm. sounds like a... Oh, no, this game. is cheap. I can buy a hovercraft on eBay for, like, four grand. Why? Oh, God, John's going to die. Well, I don't know. That's probably what a hovercraft costs. Yeah, but why would you want a hovercraft? <laughs> or a nicer one. Oh, hang on. There's a nicer one here for seven grand. It looks like it's got, like, a bed built in for, like, a sex hovercraft. A sex hovercraft? Of course, that's yeah, where so you, you go. Can, like, have... I want to have sex in the cube. I want to have sex in the hovercraft. I'm John. I have... Oh, slash, I have sex. I just think this is... Oh, this is... Yeah, this is a sexy hovercraft. It's only seven grand. Are you going to, like, like, spaff, gonna... throw someone off the edge and be like, goodbye! <laughs> just try to do a fucking wall. <laughs> it came and went. That's your plan, is it? Uh, <laughs> I just like the entire time. There's no communication. Be able to hear, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> John, don't buy I just feel like... And this, this is just part of my extended plan. Just walk into a bar and be like, actually, no, these aren't tattoos. I, I survived a lightning strike. By the way, do you want to come take a ride on my hovercraft? Nothing has ever been as Florida as that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hey babe, do you want to come take a ride of my hovercraft? <laughs> vroom vroom! That does legitimately no, just... No, no, <sighs> no vroom vroom, it's big fan. It's one big fan. Two big fans. Oh, you, you wouldn't want to get sucked off on that. You don't know what that would mean, would you? <laughs> you don't know if you're going to be thrown into a big fan or not. <laughs> oh my god, oh, oh my god. This is... I'm looking up, sorry, I'm looking up uh, second-hand planes pricing-wise, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I said I bought Boeing and no one batted a fucking island. No, I've got the price of a Boeing 747 here. Without seven engines. and a bit million. Without engines. No, with engines, with ah. wings, it's landed 29,400 times. Right, you know, that, that's not a bad price, lightness life. 10,000, no, There miles. is a... Okay, there's something here listed as a Piper PA-22-108 cult, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's 1,700 pounds. Oh, shit. That's it, very it is. Cheap. It's an aircraft. Good. Yeah. It's what we're looking for. It's very literally a basket. Uh-huh. <laughs> for a hot air balloon. It's just a basket. It's just a basket oh. on its own. <laughs> it's just, it's just what... a picture of a basket. <laughs> now, John, what are your thoughts on hot air balloons? Oh, yeah, there's one here with a McDonald's logo on it for 3,200. No, no, I no, mean, no, here's no. the thing. I feel better about them because they're going so slowly. Surely they can't go too wrong. You oh god, they go them. wrong. You cannot control them. What the fuck? They're fucking deadly. Yeah, well, yeah, but what are they going to do? They're either going to go up or go down. No, they no, normally go through wind. fucking buildings and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah they might go a bit the, side to side. If you the gravity's going to gonna keep that thing. basket where I want it to be. Is it Bristol that does the big balloon launch? I think it is. Yeah, have you ever been to that where you see all the, the hot air balloons take off from Bristol and then they all just fuck around and bump into each other and like... 85 people die a year. It's great. You can't. You, you can only control if they go up, John. That's literally all you can control. No, you can control if they come down too. Well, you, you, no, you you can infer that you want it to go down, but it doesn't necessarily yeah. control it. Yeah. Well, surely if you just introduce sufficient cold air into it, it you must can't come down. introduce cold air. You can just stop giving it hot air. That your only that's control you is giving it hot air. That's the only only. Yeah, but that's a self-correcting problem because if you get close to space, it's going to get cold. But yeah. But... Well done. Oh, well done, John. Yeah, no, okay. you've solved it. Fuck it. If you're Let's going just, sideways... When I... you go... Yeah, if, you, if you're up there and next to you fucking over it is William Shatner, yeah, <laughs> you probably come down. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Self-correcting problem. There is a presumably a... If you turn off the gas, there is a literal ceiling to how high a balloon can ever get because it will cool itself down as it gets close to space. Uh, yeah, so you turn uh, the gas off and now you're plummeting towards the ground. Yeah. I'm not plummeting. If I start plummeting, I'll turn the gas back on. <laughs> I, I don't... God, you don't understand. Oh my God, it's like like fucking. Car I just feel like again. balloons are way safer than planes. This is I the like stupidest. Move... Uh, you've said a lot of stupid shit over the years, John. And that is the <laughs> fucking stupid. That is the genuinely the stupidest thing you've ever fucking said. 
You know what's I... always a really nice sign of a lovely alternate universe? Where there's fucking blimps oh, everywhere yeah. in the sky. Yeah, those big Bring explosive back blimps, things. The civilized those way to massive travel. explosive slow lumbering <laughs> things. I do well, like that found everyone. The helium, not hydrogen, the, you twats. The... Yeah, but then you sound then like it a doesn't go bang. thing, wouldn't you? You'd sound awful. Also, I you know, just think I, I'd be I'd be way happier on a big helium blimp. Just let's do everything with balloons. You realize helium's a lot less like you can you need a lot more helium. Like like it, the amount of helium to lift one of those things takes up way more space than hydrogen. That's why they use hydrogen. And I'm also aware that helium is kind of quite a finite resource. We're kind of running out of. Yeah. Just just want to just want to point something out that they did a few years back have that big like look this is going to be the future of travel balloon a big blimpy thing and it crashed on its first go. It didn't did. It? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, maybe my balloon plan needs... But okay, here's the thing. Here's, here's what I feel like. If I see a balloon out the window and it looks like it's kind of drifting in my direction, I feel more confident that my house can take an impact from a fucking balloon I than do, from an aeroplane you know that's really got engines and propellers. This. I enjoy that John is there just fucking sitting there going, well, you've got on one hand, you've got this wonderful safe contraption with loads of safety features and all this other shit. And the other one, you've got a picnic basket that's just fucking going wherever the fuck it wants. <laughs> like it's a fucking I mean, Enid Blyton novel. Yeah, I'd, I'd be much happier being with my house being struck by a wicker basket with a balloon no. tied to it. He's got a valid point. Airplane. He's got a valid point in that, you're, you know, no, if you, you know happens, hit by one, you know what happened, no? If we've got low, everyone's on by the fucking hot air balloons, all the planes are going to crash him and, and then crash into the houses. That's what's going to happen. How high do hot air balloons go? Surely they're, they're below where planes eight, go. Eight feet is the highest a hot air balloon can go. Sounds about right. Yeah. See below where planes go, John. Uh, assuming we've assuming we've banned all Cessnas, they're not getting up to where fucking seven four sevens are. I mean, are they? this is this no. is the interesting point when John discovers. Exactly. John, when, John, we've when got we've John, got the ground where I live, do you then know the what? middle uh, bit the of the sky does. where hot air balloons are, then the top bit of the sky where the planes are. Job you know, done. Everyone stays in their lane. Do you know what a weather balloon oh, does? Oh, and John. down below the ocean where the submarines go. <laughs> do you know what a wet? Do you know what a weather balloon does, John? I actually have no clue. I've heard the term before, but I've no idea what they actually do. I assume they're just like, they monitor the weather? Yeah, fuck it. I mean, they do sit between 16 and 105,000 feet. Oh, that so, sounds quite high. Yeah, so higher than a, higher than a plane. Okay, we need to we need to get rid of them because they don't fit into my new everyone <laughs> okay. stays in their lane system. I'm looking at the secondhand uh, listings for aircraft in the UK. Uh, now, satellites are okay. They can stay in space. Satellites and spaceships go in space. Aeroplanes go at the top of the sky, balloons in the middle, humans on the ground, hovercrafts on the top of the ocean, not on land. That's where humans are. They have to stay on the water and submarines under the sea. So and if everyone just... stays there, no one collides with anybody else. Uh, John, a 747's cruise height is 35,000 feet. A hot air balloon can get up to 68,986 feet. We're going to need smaller balloons. <laughs> Well, like okay. a weather balloon, oh, no, no, which goes even higher. So, okay, it goes ground, then planes, then hot air balloons. They have to be at the top, next to satellites. Next yeah, but there's to a pro- satellites? There's, there's, a, there's a problem with being in a hot air balloon up that high. Probably a bit nippy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> the just air might jump be... jump on a scarf, it's fine. The air might be just a little thinner up there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can pressurise a capsule. Uh huh. You know what? Also, if we gave it some sort of like thrust and wings to balance it, <laughs> give it some control. Yeah, yeah. As long as there's still a balloon attached, I'm fine with it. So It'll if slow you, it down. If you were gonna get on a seven four seven and you were a bit antsy about it, and I tied a red balloon to one <laughs> little bit of it, you'd be like, No, Let's that's go. not big. Okay, actually, you know, what? I've come up with a solution. I've come up with a solution. If we ha- said that all Cessnas have to have a massive parachute built into their arse so that if they John. drop below a certain altitude, it just goes John. so the plane can gently drift down, John. then we're fine. John, yes. do you know what wings do? <laughs> Not that. Yes, that. Yes. No. Yes. They don't, they don't, you, you can't just, you can't just turn off a plane and just gently drift down. Yes, you can with wings. Oh, really? Just forward yeah. a bit as well. I didn't, I didn't know that was also how also works. um planes. Literally a few years back, there was a big thing about giving parachutes to planes. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. And it turned out it was a fucking stupid idea because it would misfire more often than it would save things and kill people. Yeah, it was a regular problem in a lot of the aircraft that had yeah, parachutes. Yeah, but once also, again, John, it's only killing the people on the plane. It's keeping the people on the ground safe. Everyone on the ground's already safe, John. 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 John
How slow would a Boeing have to land on your house for your house to take it, do you think? Okay, but I mean, I don't have a problem with the Boeings. They seem to be fine because they've got flight plans. An experienced pilot who are wearing a suit. Yeah, but you're in your fucking universe. They're going to be sucking hot air balloon after hot air balloon (laughs) into their engines. (laughs) Look, the pilots are wearing a suit. I trust them they're wearing a tie. God, this we're about to start talking about helicopters and John's going to lose his fucking shit. Oh my God, John. Oh shit, I've forgotten about helicopters. Do you know how all rotation works, John? Oh, I've forgotten about helicopters. Holy shit, John, we have to ban that. John, if a helicopter stops its engine, what do you think happens yes. to it? It probably drops out the sky. No, it doesn't. It very slowly glides down. It doesn't. Well, It drops out the sky. No, it doesn't drop it, out the sky. It has a bit of a glide, but it really is just dropping out the fucking sky. No, it doesn't sky. drop out the sky. It can land safely. No. It, oh, the, when the, when the, Don't agree. No, sorry. When the... When the thing spins because the air still goes through it and spins them and it causes an effect of it like like it's on a parachute and you say i'm boring for like in the coal mining museum <laughs> aircraft are marvels of engineering i think they're amazing they're just the most amazing modern marvel of engineering you're right coal mining is a marvel <laughs> they're really interesting i'm glad we've come to an agreement so I, went, I was in poland like 10 years ago in warsaw and they have this big building in the middle and they had a museum in it, and it was literally, I, I didn't know what it was. And I went in, there was a very angry, angry Polish woman at the front desk. She couldn't speak any English. I went through, and you know what it was? It was a Polish mining museum. And then they were playing this music in the background that basically sounded like a... You know, like the, um, the, uh, the fucking Matt and Trey doing the little wah, wah, wah thing, Daniel. Yeah, literally, it sounded like that. And it was this very sad Polish mining museum where they're, where they're talking about mining and going, and then the Soviets came, like, oh. And that's my entire, like, all of my thinking about coal mining museums is basically coal mining museums are going, we coal mined, and lots of people died in the coal mines, and then someone came and closed all the coal mines. We we're really sad about the end of it. It's just about all coal mine museums are, it's just sadness. That's all they are. Sadness. Thatcher came, and then we fucking no, buried it. They, they, they made, the coal mining museum near us made coal mining fun for children. <laughs> I have found the number. Okay, I realise I phrased that in a way that makes it <laughs> that makes it sound like a recruitment tool of propaganda for trying to get children to call money. That wasn't what it was about, was <sighs> that? Yes, Daniel. I found a number. I found some stats. I found some stats about things. Uh-oh. Uh oh. So, so this is like this. This contains the death index, which is. How many times more likely you are to die from something uh-huh. with airlines set at one? So if you're comparing it to airlines, uh, a, a non-scheduled charter flight is 59.5 times more likely to end in death than a regular airline flight. Uh-huh. Okay. And helicopters are more deadly than that. Yes. And general aviation, like private planes, is 271 times more likely than airlines. John's yes. right, we should ban all planes that aren't big and flying high. John's right, they're more risky, but if you take the most... Even, even, even the most deadly form of air travel is still safer than almost everything else. Oh, cars, I mean, I, yeah, 453 I would just fundamentally ban helicopters. <laughs> helicopters I'm just banning as a starting point, because I don't know how they work. Helicopters like, are safer than planes. they seem to be like, desperately spinning like no. blades really fucking fast to stay airborne. It kind of feels like, you know, a person flapping their, w- trying to flap their arms as fast as they can to desperately try and fly. It just strikes me as a bad idea. Oh, God, like yeah, because pla- planes never have spinny things on them, do they? No plane in this day and age has any spinny shit in that engine of theirs. Yeah, but they've also got wings. That reassures me. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopters like, have rotors. They should have a big balloon. <laughs> John, heli- or wings. John, helicopter. Would it hurt, would it hurt the, John, the helicopter John. to have some big extra wings on the side just so I feel better a, about it? There are helicopters like that that exist. B, yes, it would hurt. Oh, shit. Had loads of weight. Like? I've never seen one of them. Honestly, helicopter with wings. Uh, yeah, Vertical there's... flight is trickier when you've got massive fucking wings yeah. providing resistance. There's helicopters with short, stubby wings that are currently in development by Boeing and like Lockheed Martin for like, military use. Oh, shit. Use. They're really cool. Yeah, they are. They're basically night wings. Yeah, they're awesome. But, um, I just feel like, okay, this is this is halfway to my view of what... Okay, the ultimate airline, in terms of trying to, you know, keep things safe, uh-huh. there should be redundancy in place yeah, that's, to deal with potential faults. So I what wish if I was had, redundant okay, right now. No, hear me out here. Hear me out. Like, an aeroplane... Hey, John, right? he's, he's making the airline industry safer. Okay. 
shut up. It's fine. So it's an aeroplane and it's got wings and it's got and it's got the normal engines right there under the wings as they should be, right? What we also have, just in case something goes wrong there, is a propeller on the nose, an old school backup propeller, just in case. And on top of the plane, we've got helicopter style rotors. All right, and they can they, they can also provide some extra thrust, points, so you yeah, can take very, off and land more done. safely with vertical landing don't, takeoff. Don't, don't, okay, don't, don't. and then on top of the rotors, there's going to be a balloon. So if everything else goes wrong, <laughs> you can pump some gas into the balloon, and then right. you can just drift down I, safely. I, so there's redundancy okay, I, built on redundancy, built on redundancy. That plane that. is uncrashable. First of all, okay, the, uh, no matter what happens, for, you can get John, that thing down John, safely. First of all, and you can save John. so much space on airports. Imagine all the airport John, space. Those things all exist in the all crash. Save the spaces. We convert that into John. affordable housing to deal with the John. housing crisis. Listen to me. All of those features aside from the balloon were actually things they tried, and they were all terrible and caused the planes to crash, and that's why we don't use them. John, well, would yeah, you be happy if didn't planes right. were like on rails in the sky? Like big rails 60,000 feet in the sky, which is then you get in a plane and swoosh around those. Yeah, I've seen that. It's in Bioshock Infinite. It worked pretty well. Yeah, we'll just do that then. Yeah. It, worked, it worked really well for Black Widow, that flying city. So what could possibly go wrong? I mean, to be honest, I'd be up for like a massive, like world spanning monorail network where you can just get like, you know, really fast trains going on a rail all across the oceans. That'd be great. Yeah, monorails yeah. are really known for their reliability and safety. I don't know if you're being sarcastic. Of course or not, I'm being fucking sarcastic. Have you not seen trained. that documentary, The Simpsons? <laughs> John, here's a question. If a train, if you're on a train, normal yes. train, right, and the train well, this breaks sounds down, like a maths question, and, the and train, it's going 200 and miles an hour, if the train and it's got down, two in it. right, and you all need to yeah. get off the train, how do you get off the train? Through the door. Well, one of my new aircrafts comes and picks you up, so you can just hover, because it's got a balloon no, and rotors. John, you get out, the, and you're on the ground. In a monorail, you open the doors, and you know what's there? A fucking big ass drop. Well, yeah, that's why there's like little inflatable slides that come down, like at the end of that episode of The Simpsons. Inflatable slides are way more fun than just getting out of something. Exactly. It's it's not only safe. One it's point fun. for monorail. Yeah, yeah. people don't tend Thank to break you. that. People don't break their ankles when going down inflatable slides ever. That's not a really common injury. Well, they're fools. Who would break their ankle on a slide? Lots of people. Toddlers. Yeah, slides are fun. Those emergency slides. People fucking break their ankles and arms on them all the time. Yeah, yeah but I mean, if they're using that, maybe the plane that they're on has just crashed and that's how they broke their ankle. Then no, they blame people, on the no. Slide. I mean, they're welcome to stay on the sinking monorail if they want to. <laughs> no one's going to force them to sinking? risk their precious what ankle. You know what? You've just enjoyed hanging out on your wait, broken down monorail. Wait, wait, wait. If it's sinking, just get off when it gets to ground level. <laughs> Don't need the slide, John. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Yeah, just, fine. Just, Get off. These yeah, ideas yeah but then maybe if, if, if some, one person's just hanging out the front, hogging the door, saying, you know, I'm just going to wait to get to the water, then I'll get off. Well, then everyone else, by the time it's their turn to get off, it's going to be 50 feet underwater. Here's water. a question to anyone listening. If Scott Marley's yeah. listening, right, in Kerbal, go and make that plane John described. <laughs> Two inches of the wings, right on the front, helicopter right on the top, big wings and a fucking balloon and see if it flies. An inflatable balloon that's just like flapping around most yeah. of the time one would assume. Yeah. Well, no, it, it, could be, it could be, like, what it should be, it should be packed away, but if you push a button, it, like, explosively opens and then you pump gas into it really fast. Uh-huh. Like, really fast. So it doesn't really get fast. caught in the rotors, which I have may, a question, may not be on John. all the time. What happens yes. to all the forward momentum of the plane? We well, only activate it if the plane's already in trouble. And, like, I have a blinding. question, John. Why yes. isn't the helium that's clearly already in the plane just causing the plane to float? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> I've no clue. But then again, I've never been 100% sure how boats that are clearly very heavy and made of metal float. Oh my God, so, Jesus Because they're Christ. hollow, John. They're hollow. And they're yeah, but like, they're the also size. really heavy. Yeah, but they're taller at the side. It's called displacement. Air is very... Okay, you're getting into physics beyond me there. Let's move on. Displacement. Oh have you never got into a bath? John, have you never been to school? <laughs> no, but no, but a bath's like a boat in reverse. That's different. Yeah, but you when you get in, you displace I don't know, I'm like, at that point, that's water trapped inside a boat rather than water trapped outside a boat. That's completely the opposite of what I want. Like a bath's the worst. Like if a boat should be shown a picture of a bath and be told not that. All right, you should put that in, like, the captain's cabin. So every night before he, you know, goes to bed and when he wakes up, first thing he sees is, no, if you've okay. created a big dippy cup thing with water in it, you fuck the boat. John, if you had yeah. to, if you put, like, a washing up, like, a uh, bucket thing into yeah. water, it floats, yeah. right? Yes, because it's light and made of plastic. No. 
And there's lots no. of air. <laughs> no, you can put a. Well, you could put one of those made of concrete into a thing, and it would still float. What if, what if it was made of metal? No, like a metal concrete ball? sinks. No. I know that because I've seen it in films where mafia people put other people's feet in concrete then toss yeah, them. Like it'd be pretty yeah, fucking embarrassing yeah, yeah, yeah. John, if, he, if, they, if John, that film ended the with them putting all, Jimmy John, the Snitch's feet John, in concrete. The th they just toss John, it off the bridge and he just floats John, down the river. John, the thing that makes boats float is not the material they are made of. But I feel like it should be a consideration. You know what's really surely. interesting about the podcast? Like wood floats. Wood floats. Yeah? Yeah. yeah we're there you go. Material. Then why don't, why don't piers just fuck off into the ocean, John? Because we tied them to the <laughs> land. Right, you know what I like about the podcast? The is John clearly knows nothing about physics. Yeah. And I almost got a degree in it. And it turns out that whatever you, wherever you are on the scale of physics, if you go to one of the extremes, like knowing nothing or knowing everything, um, quite clearly that just means you get the same job. Of playing video games online because you are useless. Yeah. You need to know a medium amount of physics. Any more, you <laughs> fucked up. Any less, and you end up here. You just have to. If you know too much physics, you're fucked, and you end up like us. Reasonable, yeah. <laughs> That's a good range of education, isn't it? Because we are the three tiers yeah. of education, and it just clearly doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, there's, there's a tier above us we haven't got to because there's people who get like fucking postgraduate and oh sorry and sorry shit. i only did a year uh i, <laughs> I did a year can we just can we address is is ashen's not a doctor i'm pretty sure he's a doctor oh shit yeah no he's a doctor again Psychology. so it doesn't really make a difference clearly <laughs> like <laughs> your, your associations consist of me who has no education john who's university educated yourself who is mm -mm, university educated and a doctor a literal doctor yeah, but the doctor yeah, but like the does good have sort of a doctor or the shit fake sort the, of doctor. The doctor does have a, a feel that Leicester Square's Odeon tickets available. Yeah, but that's now. Not, I don't think that's got anything to do with his <laughs> his, his PhD. <laughs> got a feeling. I mean, good for it, you, Doctor Polybius. <laughs> yeah, that's what the film's about. It's about his doctorate. It's true. How oh, is it? Yeah, a, a yeah. job would know if you didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> John, watch my fucking film. You never sent it to me, Matt. Send him a copy of the film. I've only got one copy of the film. Somebody send John a copy of the film. The following <laughs> send address. John a copy of the film. I'll find a way to view it. It's on, well, it's on digital systems and platforms. <laughs> I want to put it out. I could give I could, the one copy I have. Ashen sent me, and it's very specifically the case is broken, and he's written in it that he's given me the broken one to annoy me. Wow. <laughs> you know, what? I'll just find a version online. It's fine. Classic Doctor of Psychology move there. <laughs> <laughs> Not very much, is, isn't it? Fucking hell. Yeah. Basically, the point is, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You'll all, no matter what you do, you'll end up nowhere. So We're give up. up. And, <laughs> and, on, and on that sad, sad bombshell. <laughs> Please send your uh, plane. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go buy a hovercraft now. Oh my God. I'm going to go buy a Boeing. Crash it into John's house. Really, fuck it. Actually, you know what? Well, I'd that's fine. I'll be out of my hovercraft at I'd the time. crash it into the house next to John's to really <laughs> shit him up. <laughs> <laughs> That'd work. That was way longer than it needed to be. That's the podcasts. You could all go now. You're free. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Such a long pause.